All right, everybody. Welcome on in to another session of Dungeons and Dragons. I hope you guys are having yourself a fantastic day. Um, we got ourselves a little member short since he got pulled into work, but still keep the game going. And uh, with me, I've got uh, the four people: Renuza, uh, hey, Dav, no. Eros, and Elias. Hello. Hello. All right, and then we're basically just going to be continuing right off from our next session here, and I don't think there's really any huge big announcements that we've got, so let's do it. Okay. So from last time that you had left off, and I'm going to turn the music down a little bit just to make sure that I can actually hear myself. Uh, from where we left off last time... You had just kind of gone through a really big confrontation with a base, a goblin, um, what seemed to feel, feel like an army at this point, and fighting off against what seemed like a impossible task ended up being something that was a lot more manageable, um, thanks to the assistance of your uh, trusted guide. That and setting yeah. the bridge on fire. <laughs> that and setting a bridge on fire. That is one that you definitely cannot forget. Uh, and Make sure to burn the bridge when we crossed it. Well, burn that is... when you got there. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, uh, and as you had just continued your travel from that moment on, um, night turned to daylight as you arrive within a small like town. Um, at the break of dawn, um, seeing a lot of just general agriculture uh, and farms being set up from the beginning upon certain businesses. And as you kind of make your way in, um, you still see that your guide, Aknon, is like, he's very much falling in and out of consciousness upon arrival. Um, but he's as he's still right and he's still driving the carriage yes um and for those of you just basically just traveling on in like there really wasn't a moment of rest that you were given during your time with continued travels uh so it's a little bit rough with being able to find a moment of rest all of you are generally feeling a bit weary on your ends um exhausted to say the least um, and as the rutted track emerges from a woodland hillside, you catch your first glimpse of Phandalin. Um, the town consists of 40 or 50 simple log buildings, some built on an old fieldstone foundation. More, uh, there's some old ruins, crumbling stone walls covered in ivy and briars, surrounded by some newer homes and shops. It's showing how this must have been a much larger town in the centuries past. Most of the newer buildings are set on the side of the cart track, which widens into a muddy main street and sort of is, uh, of sorts as it climbs through a ruined manor on the hillside at the east of town. Um, as you approach, uh, you do see that it actually is a bit more empty than you think. Even though you can kind of hear some farm animals on the side, there's not really anyone immediately on the road this time, um, even though this would definitely be a busier time. For it to um, for things to take place. Well, uh, whenever Akanon seems to be falling asleep, uh, Parth would uh, keep like nudging at his uh, arm or shoulder to see if he's awake. Uh, uh, I, I'm fine. I'm fine. I just I need to get to the end. We should be able to rest there for a while. Uh, um. Uh, Parth, you notice like he does not look good. Like uh, you can see, like from some a lot of his wounds, there is still some bleeding that's occurring. Um, and you can even see like some discoloration around the wounds. Um, I need to knowing, check. Yeah. yeah, I do still have a spell slot. <laughs> mm hmm. So he he is not looking good for wear. Um, you can even see through his eyes, like there is some dilation occurring, uh, and 
just like a hard time of like being able to center focus. So he he is struggling, but he is he's fighting to to get to this end. <laughs> to buy him some time, uh, uh, he, he can hear Parth starting to sing a little song in his throat uh, with little musical chirps. And before he can uh, interrupt Parth, the uh, pseudo dragon uh, noses him, and he feels uh, himself get healed. Okay. Uh, wait. So is that like a healing uh, cure wounds or like a healing this word? Cure, or this is cure, cure yeah cure wounds. So okay. Uh, that would be uh, a lousy four HP. Double checking. A lousy four HP. Okay, uh, so as you uh, he you see him try to go ahead and like stop it, but he's just too weak. Uh, as you go to heal him, you see that a lot of the uh, at least a couple of the wounds stitch themselves together. Um, some attempt to, but they still keep open. Um, and even from the wounds that were closed, you still see that there's discoloration of the skin there. Um, knowing, knowing that you did a little bit to help, but these are pretty severe wounds. Um, and he probably would need medical attention here pretty soon. Parth uh, keeps showing concern and seems to pace back and forth on the back of the cart right behind uh, Akanon. <laughs> it's okay, Parth. We're, we're almost there. Um, is there, and then as he proceeds to drive the cart a bit more forward, is there anyone? Uh, is there anything else that anyone wants to try and do? Or remember, there's uh, only room in the cart for one, maybe two people if they squeeze together to sit in the cart. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure there's much I can do, so I'm not going to do anything. My character would look to try to cast a healing spell on him. You're going to cast a healing spell? Oh, which one? Well, since we're out of battle, I'd like to try to do Cure Runes. Alright, yeah, if you want to go ahead and do that too, then uh, you can try and do that. Yeah, if you have the slot, uh, I'm assuming pre-level up, right? Yes, this is pre-level up, by the way. So if you, have, if you have a slot you can burn pre-level up to do it, then yes, you can do it. Ah. Yes, I should still have one. one okay. Left. Yeah, so if you want to go ahead and use that slot, you can cast Cure Wounds on him. I can see the dice. Uh, space bar. Yeah, Thank if you it. space bar, then you can click on it. Nice. All right. So in this case, you actually do see that a lot of the standard cuts and wounds, and um, at least of the smaller pieces that um, of damage that he took. Uh, okay, so it's a plus ten to heal. Okay. Yeah. So as you go to heal in your specific manner, a lot of his wounds do close. Um, though you do notice that. Some of the bigger lacerations on his back, um, they attempt to heal and kind of close the wound, but you see that bits and moments of it start to connect and then it rips back open, um, knowing that there is some restraint and you do hear like, like Aknon was starting to fall asleep a little bit. And then from that pain, it shocks him back up. It's like, oh, mm. Just please let me recover somewhere else. I I understand you're trying to help me, but that hurts more. Uh, Vladimir's Parth. gonna. Oh, go ahead. Parth, Parth just Parth paces even more, looking even more upset. Uh, this is probably gonna be a long shot, but fuck it. Um. Uh... Vladimir's curiosity kind of gets to the best of him and notices the discoloration a little bit. And I'm going to perform a 
It's not a strong suit, but he could try to perform a medicine check to see what's going on with it. By observation okay. or by uh, actually touching him? Uh, observation. Like, uh, it's, it's... yes. Uh, so, yeah, you can go ahead and do that. So go ahead and do medicine check. That'll be a 15 total. Okay. So you can tell that because these wounds have not been closed uh, on a timely basis or even like sanitized, there is definitely some infection going on. Um, and you can even see like even bits and moments of it starting to push a bit more out. Um, even within like some of the bigger wounds in his back, since you're able to see from that side um, through his like cut clothing that there is some sort of like pus that is beginning to form around the wounds. Yeah. Um, so it's, and to you, the sudden fear that kicks in almost as if like you were like standing down a dragon itself it like hits you knowing that this guy is a walking corpse at this point but miraculously he is alive like this this would have taken over like anybody at this point something's not right we need to get we need to get him to a man of cloth soon something's not right with this in this infection you have I it's just, a bit it's a bit more exponential than it normally would be it's just standard infection we i've had these for hours mind you so of course infection is going to spread quickly especially around parts like these I think the way Ace was trying to deliver that was as a lesser man would have died from this a long time ago. Yeah. Oh. Well. Yeah, just like a lesser man would have died from this, but knowing his experience as an adventurer, it's it's like gruesome that he's p pushing forward, that he hasn't given up yet. But you know that his body, like, the, like any standard person's body would have failed like yeah. at this point. From the pain alone, people would have just passed out and given in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. But I, I still see we need to get you to uh, more specialist. Correct. I'm going to go ahead and just teleport you guys here quickly. So give me one moment. Oh, no, I can't actually do that. I will just move you guys forward then. Uh, so as you go on ahead and travel more uh, forward into the town itself. Um, whoa. Going past a, um, a couple buildings, you do notice that there is a person on the road um, in orangish like clothing. I'm going to move you guys a bit closer here. Um, and he looks at you guys with like concern, and you see him immediately run forward. Um, and then basically, like when he stops the cart near the front, he's just gasping for breath. He's like, sorry, sorry. Are, are you adventurers? It's like, yes. I, <laughs> Can I make an insight check on this man to see if I to see who he like to try to get a tell on like who they might be? Um, like inciting specifically upon what? Like, like, like if just, they're suspicious or? N I mean, just to kind of see like what they look like their role is in this town i guess like are they, um, are they a man of um order or a man of uh what's the word working that works for a city um yeah like like do they work are they like are they like a merchant are they a cleric are they a, a figure of authority mayor etc uh yeah you can go ahead and do an insight check on them Parth uh, simply uh, uh, chirps while st still p pacing back and forth, looking concerned at Akanon. That's an 11. Okay, so from the details that he has right now, it's kind of hard to tell exactly what he does here, but you can tell that he's wearing, like, 
comfortable but yet somewhat stylish like commoner's clothing Real like almost as if it's it. almost as if it's customly designed a little bit um but just from him approaching up you can't really tell exactly what sort of role he has here um though but you can tell that he is at least someone that would live here okay it's like i i saw you you have um Akinon in your cart um he, he doesn't look too good um here I, I can bring you guys to the to the doctor and everything um if you follow me that's good that's good he does need medical attention okay well, all right, then I'll go ahead and lead you um, in this direction then. And you see him basically, like, he, like, basically, like, um, like, taps on the donkey to have it forcibly go without Akinon, like, pushing it. And all of you do start to move forward into the town itself. Um, as I gently try to move you guys closer and closer. <laughs> <laughs> uh as you do notice that um a couple of buildings that you do pass on by consist of just yeah like a lot of like the newer wooden style like homes um and he seems to rush you i'm gonna just move you up like this that way it's much easier i'm pretty sure um, ace but just confirming parth has a history of be of uh, having been to this town before a couple of times that is right that is correct. You you have at least some general knowledge of being here. Also, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to drop you guys. I'm trying to drag you guys near here. Um, you guys basically make your way around to a... Um, you know, it kind of cuts through uh, a one backyard, pretty much. And is able to make it to this building right here, where I'm just going to plop you guys. Do backyards really exist in Phandalin, though? Yes. Yes, they do. It's called private property. <laughs> Damn, you're uh, right. There you go. And as you make it to the small little home here, and I'm going to open up just a little bit, you do see that this um, citizen does um, assist in helping out with carrying Akanon on over inside. Um, so I'll just go ahead and just take these two and move them on in. And uh, there's not really like a... Oh. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, no, you, you go ahead. Uh, by the way, guys, this is where you want to start utilizing the cut box. On your height thingy, grab the green peg and pull it mm -hmm. down until the roof gets cut off the building. That is correct. like 300 feet already. It's at the top, so... The white circle huh. should be at the very bottom, and the green peg should be pulled down until the roof of the the, uh, the house gets cut off. Yeah, the roof of the house is cut. Oh, there we go. Now I'm starting to see tokens drop. <clears throat> Makes sense. Look at the top by default. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. What? I think Come it. On. I don't know if I set mine to to 300 feet, but I think it might be set to the top by default. Well, again, yeah. You, so you just you need to drag it down. Your... Grab the white circle on your on the bar on the right hand side, drag it to all the way down to the bottom to zero feet because we're at sea level. And then the green peg, I drag it all the way down to nineteen feet and it'll take the roof off the building so you can see it. Oh sweet. Huh. I didn't know Acnon knows uh break dancing. He's currently balancing on his head on my screen. Oh, let's go. <laughs> He's standing Wait, really? on the uh, table yes. for me. <laughs> oh, I have him knocked down. Oh, uh Oh, he is upside down. Oh, okay. He is upside down. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I was going to have him laying down, but I suppose that will also do too. Yo, he's busting, busting a move right now. <laughs> okay, Not really so... Not in his condition. Yeah, uh, so for any... So who goes into the house uh, as the door is left open? Oh, that is... Well, you saw what Parth did. Okay. And I'll head in as well. Okay, so to those of you who do enter on into the building, uh, this is actually a very small and cozy house. Um, and not anything that is too severely big. Um, everything does just kind of 
seem to be put within the same area. Um, in the corner nearby the Firestone, there is a um, basically just kind of laid out like hay sort of ground sleeping mats. Um, there's two in particular. And as this man goes to basically lay uh, this um, Akanon on the table, aka not busting it down uh, at all. <laughs> um, not busting it down, style. Yeah, you do see that there is uh, what looks to be a woman uh, who it kind of just like is like freaking out and talking with this person of just like, how would you bring him here? Like, what is going on in sorts? And they're all kind of and they're kind of like arguing a little bit. Um, Parth uh, flutters over and lands on top of one of the uh, handles for the lanterns and mm -hmm. seems reasonably calm, but uh, is still watching the man that uh, led uh, Akon onto the table. Uh, I assume Parth is roughly familiar, familiar with this figure from before. Yes. So this, um, so this is just a general, um, like, like cloth maker. Or I, I suppose I'm trying to think of like the better way to put it. Like, the, like a man of cloth, a woman of cloth, textilist, textilist. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, and he goes by the name of uh, Darren, and like D A R I N. And so he he's a very like. Um, from your history, Parth, um, Akon has had very fun conversations and times with Darren before, uh, being just a general overall fun person, and always and he was the person that actually stylized um, Akon's clothing um, to be like so eccentric and like uh, so like um, like prismatic as he is, so. We have a very personal close tie between these two. Uh, and the woman that's there is one of a few people who have some sort of proficiency within medicine within the town. She's uh, she's more of an assistant to a prior doctor, um, but she now is primarily one of the few leading people that is able to do medical stuff. Uh, what's the woman's name? Uh, the woman's name is Mary. Um, and so as they kind of arguing and consistent everything, um, uh, Mary does basically start to take off a bit of like Akanon's clothing, uh, to the, um, cringing of, uh, Darren as she's basically taking like a knife and everything and cutting away at the cloth. He's literally <laughs> cutting him out of his clothes. Yep. Yeah. And so she's like observing like the different wounds and everything. And she goes to you and she's like, how long has he been like this? He's... It has been approximately, by the way, out of character, it has been approximately four hours. Oh, yeah. well, a bit longer. Because you've oh, been waiting for time. Yeah, because you were waiting for hours and hours for Akhnon in the uh, the cave. So it could have been way longer than that. Oh, yeah, I'm Leo... just talking about the travel time, right? Oh, the travel time. Oh, okay. Yep, got it. Let's see. We were waiting approximately... So he went off on his own to investigate a cavern and he told us to wait for him. We waited about, what was it, three, four hours? Does that sound about right? As he looks over to the rest of the group. Uh, Marshall? Uh, <laughs> Marshall? And, uh, Nor, <laughs> Nor uh, you two are the only ones that can speak. <laughs> I'm just watching the scene play out, if I'm being honest. Yes, but Vlad literally turned yeah. and asked you a question. <laughs> yes, oh. I, I literally asked you a question. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. But I, I got this. I got to say, unfortunately, it's been hours upon hours since he's gone those roads. Yeah, we'll, we, we've been on the road for quite some time. Well... His wounds are just more than just deep. There's an infection that's gone through it. Almost as if it's like rusted metal's been infused within the wounds. Ooh. Yes, the the beings that we fought, the goblins, they had rustic weapons, unfortunately. Um, I know prestidigitation. Is there a way it could help with cleaning the wounds or is that or is my spell limiting? 
I would say that your spell is it. It's not used for medical purposes, so therefore it would be limited to that. Okay. Um, it, it can it's... clear the, it can clean blood away, but it can't uh, disinfect. Yeah. No, I mean even for that, even for like cleaning the blood. Um, if you're wanting to assist on this, you could ask her if you wanted to. But I, I would say that primarily it would just remove the blood away, even though that there is still some blood pouring out. It so would probably be best to wait for them to finish up than President mm -hmm. take any blood away. Yeah, like there's a lot of blood in his clothing, so if, if there was able to, you could probably, if you had mending, you could probably mend it back together and clean it. I but... do not, sadly. Okay, sadly. Uh, um, we're kind of just speaking this. I do know a thing or two about medicine. Can I help with his injuries? Honestly, any helps it would be fantastic. Up here, come here. As you see her start to get him on his back, and he is like groaning in pain. Um, as she just like looks at the wounds and just like, I don't, I don't believe this. Um, lucky you guys came in as fast as you could, though. He would have been dead in a matter of moments. Um, and you see, she starts grabbing like different sorts of like um, containers and sorts, and like she grabs like a big like metal box that has like sutures and gauze and everything that is needed and she even has like um a big bottle of like alcohol and uh she basically just like hands the alcohol over to you um lore and she's like here i need you to get him as wasted as possible it's to stop the pain right <laughs> Yes, and then I need you to go ahead and pour on the wounds. Alright, my character does that. Okay. Uh, so, even though, like, Aknon is kind of on his side slash on his back or so, you are able to, like, help him drink. Um, and then drink a little more. And then drink a little more, and you notice that he's not stopping. <laughs> Uh, Elias, you're you were really quiet there. What was your question? Or does he need it to be flavored or something to help him drink it? I can help with that. He's, he's drinking just, it right he's, now as it is. <laughs> okay, yeah, he's great. he's drinking it right now, and you notice that like you, you realize that if you don't stop him, it, he's gonna go through the whole thing. <laughs> I just probably say uh, that's enough and try to take it from him. <laughs> I was like, sorry, sorry. Um, <laughs> Just gotta get the pain away. Uh, and you basically, uh, for the rest of it, you like, clean off like the top and then you pour the rest on his like wounds and everything. And you you see that this woman starts almost as if like she is automatically honed in. Like she's done this numerous times. She begins like putting some additional stuff in to clean the wounds and clean the pus out. And picking out, like, different bits of, like, the metal that's in there and cleaning the whole areas um, before she begins suturing. If you were wanting to help suture in another area, I would ask you to do a medicine check. I do not trust my medicine check, so I uh, I've My character's got proficiency, so yeah, so help with the, med with the suturing. Alright, go ahead and give me a medicine check. And it's a plus six. Nice. Okay. Very nice. So, in a matter of moments, with you, like you fully understand, like I know how to get around um, dragon scales since they are a bit tougher than the usual skin and flesh. So you are able to precisely go in between the scales, getting into the flesh, and suture up like one of the bigger uh, lacerations on his back. And basically helping it, like, pat it down a little bit and clearing it. And um, he doesn't really, like, seem to feel any sort of pain from it. So you do an excellent job of suturing. Um, and as time kind of passes by, what feels like an hour of you guys just sitting there doing something. Or just kind of waiting and helping out. You do see that he is fully cleared up. Um, and he's wrapped up and everything. And with like a big wipe of sweat off of her 
forehead. She's like, well, I recommend that he lay down for a couple days and we'll have to get him some medication for the infection. It's, that's something we'll have to take care of um, with some herbs and other th other sorts. Um, do you have a place of lodging, um, you all? Unfortunately, we do not. We only just arrived in town. In fact, we were all just gathered what, uh, the other night as a group. And we were on our way over to uh, Adventure Guild. Oh, it's uh, Aknon's Guild? Uh, yes. Were you getting back from a mission at all? or? No, we were actually on our way in for the first time. Aknon was our guide. Uh, upon hearing this, Darren, like, shoots up a little bit. He's like, wait a minute, so you're not adventurers? You're just strangers? Well, technically, yes, we are just strangers, but we're trying to make our way to guild. Oh, okay. Because you said, you told me you were adventurers. So you're, you're going to try out to become an adventurer? Yes, uh, common for me is not best. I am not from these parts. Mm, I can definitely tell there. <laughs> we don't usually see any vulpines around here, though they are pretty rare. Yeah, it is difficult for us vulpines to come across ocean, you know, considering two months being cooped up on ship. <laughs> and as you are kind of going and uh, talking a bit more, you do see that, like, um, Aknon, like, basically just kind of turns his head to you guys, like, while slapping up, um, while, um, still laying down. He basically just kind of says, like, I just need a couple days, and I'll be fine. Um, and he goes to, like, reach for something in his pocket, but Mary is, like, kind of telling him, like, don't move, like, you're just gonna open the wounds again. Um, can I press it? I'm not pressed it. I'm um, use base hand to pull whatever he wanted to pull out of his pocket and place it on the on the table. Um, yeah, sure. So you conjure up a little mage hand, and uh, at, you go basically to like in the same area, and you shuffle through his pocket, and there's only one thing in there, and it's a small little box. Um, like it just almost as if like it fits in the size of your palm. He's like, if you can, please deliver that to Barthen's provisions. There's a certain man I have to meet with and deliver it. Um, is there any information we should know about the man we deliver it to? Uh, he tries to bring out some words, but um, he doesn't really like. He isn't really able to say too much in his condition. It's like, just say that Aknon sent you, and just ask around. You'll be guided. I just take this in, like, in my own mind, like, I, I just digest it, essentially. Out of character, I missed the name of where he said to take it. Barth uh, Barth Barthen's Provisions. Barthen's Provisions. Uh, yep, yeah, it is on the map that I sent in our group chat. Oh, Are we is. currently in Lion Shield Coaster? Uh, yes, that is correct. Oh, no, no, no. You are in the Sleeping Giant right now. Oh, the, the map is uh, 180 degrees from where we're our, our perspective at the moment. Okay. Yes, yeah, it's a little giant. awkward. <laughs> it's a little awkward. I had to, that's why I had to figure everything out. So you were within a place called the Sleeping Giant. Yeah, that, um, I see that... it. A giant square house with a red roof by that town center, that's the inn. Without further prompting, you notice that Parth hops over to uh, Marshall's mage hand. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm assuming this box is small enough for, uh, for Parth to get his jaws around it. Uh, if you want to attempt to try and grab it... Um, I mean, I just I pulled it out. I'm, not, I'm just holding it out. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, if you want to, if I mean, if you want your your mage hand to go ahead and just let him grab it, then yeah, go yeah, ahead. It's just holding it on its palm. 
but yeah, if you definitely want to do that, then you know, you're more than more is than the, free to do so. Is, but my, the question is, is, is my tiny ma able to grasp onto anything easily enough? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a small enough box for you to hold it in your mouth, so. Okay, uh, Parth takes it into his maw and seems to already be taking the uh, initiative here as he uh, hops down to the floor and, w and seems to do little flutter skips towards the uh, door. He's not running off with it, but he seems to not be w waiting for the party either. <laughs> Sounds good, then. Okay, looks like Port is ready to go already. I'll go ahead and follow him. Yeah. Uh, you can go ahead and keep your mule over here with us. We'll take good care of it. Alright. Uh, Ricardo looks to you, Mary. You're going to take, can we even take care of all of it? Yes, of course. Uh, I live just right across from here, so I'll go ahead and just, um, if you need to double check on us, then feel free. I'll We'll probably move him one over there just so he's a bit more comfortable, um, since this is definitely not a place where medical stuff would probably be the best case to have, you know? And for the donkey and the supplies, where should he bring it? Just double, just we remind me again, Akron? Uh, he doesn't really respond. He's kind of, un he's unconscious right now. Okay, and then I'll just head out. I'll bring the donkey with us. So okay. part of it Parth, uh, moving at a pace that the party can keep up with, those that are following him, he's going as the pseudo-dragon flies, because <laughs> pseudo-dragon. Uh, mm -hmm. He goes right around the edge and starts flying, seeming to know exactly where he's going. Okay. Uh, from your case that you do see, um, uh, Vlad, within the standard sylvan um, tongue of your fellow Volpine, uh, he does communicate to me you that he is going to secure a place of the inn. Uh, so that way you guys have a room to go ahead and sleep in. That sounds good. That sounds good. We Thank you. Yeah. Character stuff. Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, so being from there, uh, you guys uh, should be able to make your way over to the Barthens Provision, which, according to the map... The if map is go. a little off from the 3D model, but it has to either be this building or the building adjacent, right? Let me go ahead and see where you guys are at. Also, um, I'm, I'm bringing the donkey. <laughs> it's either this head. one or this one. Uh, so the Barthens provisions. Um, this is my character. Over here. Um, oh, I guess. Hmm. Where they go? That's really odd. Yeah, because your go? map shows it as a diagonal northwest. From the sleeping giant, so yeah, because this red building and there is no large red building. It would technically be right here, but it's not. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, this isn't one of my maps. It's just someone else. So actually, it's the building. I believe it's right actually behind you guys. Let me go ahead and double check. Let me double nope, check. Nope, it is not. Farther provisions would be. I follow the map. Okay, so I guess there is supposed to be a marketplace actually right here. Um, which I will go ahead and actively build as you guys do it. So, um, apologies on that. I don't know why the map maker didn't have this. So, uh, for this being the case, um, let me go ahead and pull up the stuff for Barthens Provisions then. And yeah, if you need to you can... where it is, just tell me where to, where to move my token into instead. No, you're in the right location. It's just the actual map itself wasn't made with it, which is really weird. <laughs> um, no idea where you guys are. Uh, zoom out and look from for look for the giant bubble. Okay, we're in that building. Okay, give me a moment as I just go ahead. I'm gonna build this up for you guys. Um, also, oh, you got the donk. We were told we can leave the donkey behind. Oh, sweet. Then never mind. I yeah, the biggest work. thing is just, like, one specific thing that he wanted you to go ahead and bring. But, uh, yeah, so. Parth seems to have decided that he's on a mission and is just immediately taking this little box with him. It seems that Parth has done this before, or at least has been trained to do this, because mm -hmm. he ain't waiting. He literally took the box and just started going. He's not trying to outrun the party, but he is going for it. No, that makes sense. You, like you, you've had experience with this before. You know exactly where to go, and it's not like 
it, it's not it's not foreign to you as to where this area is. Um, and upon being able to arrive at the uh, Barthens Provisions, uh, you do notice that it is while not the um, a whole district of different areas, but it is but a larger tent. Um, that does consist to be one of the more larger areas of where provisions are usually purchased at. Um, and I'm just getting this. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, chat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why this wasn't built in. This is like a very important part of the story. <laughs> so... I really wonder if like... somebody like just cre had some creative liberty here and put Barthens provisions here in the middle of the city. No, because the, the middle the... is okay. So that's the E in. Uh, I just don't get it. This, it's a little this weird. place looks curiously like Barthens Provisions. Uh, well, Barthens Provision is supposed to be prior to the town, so it's like really odd that it is not yeah. something like that. Look inside but... the buildings. The rest don't look like a. They store. don't match. Yeah. Yeah, they're just like standard houses, so it's like really weird that that's the design for it. Oh man. But anyway, um, as you arrive upon Barthens Provision, it is <coughs> what looks to be a um, little tent segment of um, basically just general wares and sorts that are provided and. As you arrive upon in, there are like people swarming around it um, as they're trying to get like the best deals and everything. Um, and I'll just do this, make it easier. There you go. And upon one face, there is a um, what looks to be a dwarf of sorts. And it's just like, hello there. Welcome to Bothan's Provisions. How can I be helping you? And this dwarf does look to be around fair skin with a bit more of like ginger long beard and um, of just other uh, similar uh, colored hair. Is this uh, dwarf look familiar? Um, to you, not so much. Um, but you do know that this is like one of like the similar sellers that do occur here sometimes. So there you go. We'll do this for right <clears throat> now and then I'll fix it up later. And what w what did Acnon say about the box to Barthens Provisions? That there is a seller here, and that to bring it to Barthens Provisions. No name was no name was uh, exclaimed. Unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately him. not. At that point, though, he was kind of passed out due to exhaustion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Don't worry, Parth's got this uh, in the bag. Parth flutters over like. With, with a very demanding kind of demeanor to him. It's something you guys haven't seen yet is his Parth is acting very official. He's acting way more formal than you would expect a pseudo dragon to act. Parth uh, perches on the table, sits up straight, holding this box in his maw, looks right at the dwarf, like dead into his eyes, gives a scrack noise b between his jaws, pl placing the box down, and lifts a paw to paw at his insignia on his collar. Oh, you're part of the guild, aren't you? Oh, well, Parth, it's very nice to meet you. And I assume that Aknon's with you, correct? Parth nods, then turns his head to lock, look off into a direction outside the tent. Oh, well, if you're helping deliver then, I could definitely go ahead and take what you need. Um, if you're not familiar with me, my name is Gundren. And that does actually bring a bit of a um, information back to you as Aknon did mention that he had to deliver a small bit of supplies in addition to a wagon of supplies to a Gundren rock seeker. Um, so it is, it is familiar that now you realize this is the contact's name. Parth looks uh, even more confident and gives a, a bit of a nod and then seems to wait uh, curiously as uh, he nudges the box a little bit closer to the dwarf. Like, oh, fantastic, then. And you see him, like, open up a little bit, and a little bit of a glint shows, as he's not, like, really showing it up too much, as, like, trying to make sure no one else notices. It's like, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Thank you so much, Poth. Uh, and he notices, like, 
the odd group of you three is like did you need anything here, or are you with the pseudo? We are here with pseudo. Ah, uh, then you must be, um, courtiers, I assume, of Akhenon. Uh, I do beg pardon, but, uh, common is not my strong suit. We Wait. were actually on our way over to Adventurer's Guild. Parth well, looks back and forth for a moment. And then uh, does a, another quick pod, his uh, insignia on his collar, and nods. Oh, well then, well, either way, you got me the, the goods, so, yeah, no big deal then. Uh, here you go, Poth, as, um, I'm not quite sure how to give this to you, as he basically holds out uh, a bag, and it, like, ch like does a little chink, 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 as there's some gold in there. Parth just simply turns around and uh, looks straight up at Vlad with a like knowing look of <laughs> a big thing go get. <laughs> <laughs> uh, looks like Parth wants me to uh, to handle this for him, so I'll 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 take it. Uh, as he just kind of holds out his paw gently, like just I'll I'll carry it. <laughs> Fantastic, then my little Volpoin. As he goes and like he plops the gold right in your hand, and it's surprisingly heavier than you thought it was. Um, he's like, that ought to do with the supplies as well, and um, we can go ahead and take care of the supplies if you have the car somewhere else. Uh, currently, the cart is over by... Uh, what was the place we were just at? Uh, Parth, in the mean, meantime, flashes an image of the... Uh, uh, Medical lady's house. I, uh, uh, Mary's house. There we go. The Put sleeping over, giant. The, the sleeping giant. It's like, oh, you're right over there. All right, then we'll we'll send a group of men over and, and over, and then we'll take care of the supplies. But we'll make sure the cart stays with you. All right. Okay. Is it All right. sound from uh, uh, Parth as he seems to be quite confident in what's going on here. <laughs> Fantastic. And how is Aknon, actually? I didn't see him coming to town. Parth seems to look look anxious again, kind of, like, stands low on the table. He's losing his formality of, of posture. Uh, unfortunately, um, Aknon got seriously injured during an encounter we faced. Uh, he is okay. He is stable. He is patched up. Uh, he is currently over at, uh, I still can't remember the name of place. Sleeping Giant, I think it was. Hmm. But, uh, the, the, the lady there, uh, uh, the lady there patched him up. Oh, is that so? I mean, you see he gets a bit saddened from that, it's like... Hacknon's always been the great one from the guild itself, so... But he is okay. Like that. But he is okay. Oh. Well, that's good news, then. <laughs> I doubt that man will recover within a couple of days. You know he's stronger than Diamond, is what people have told me. It was a little well, bit of he... a reassuring uh, chirp coming from Parth. Well, he is... He does seem to be a tough one to crack, that's for sure. A walnut that just won't open. Does Marshall say that? <laughs> yes. Wait, what'd you say? Like a, a walnut, walnut that won't open. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that were more true than it ought to be. Well, all right then. Well, make yourselves welcome in Fandolin, I suppose. Oh, and just um, be careful while you're here. Oh. Uh... Anything uh, we should know? He doesn't really say anything. He's like, you'll figure out soon. Cheers! And he goes ahead and just walks into his place and then goes ahead and <laughs> makes on with his day. Vlad just stands there with a curious raised eyebrow going, Ooh, what strange fellow. Parth se seems to... Uh, uh 
just being rather calm about this. This doesn't seem to be the pseudo dragon's first rodeo. In fact, it looks a lot, looks disturbingly like he's done this a lot. Can I make like an insight check to figure out what the hell they meant, or any any check? Yeah, you can go ahead and do it. What check do you recommend? Uh, it's got to be insight. Okay. Oh, that. What? Where'd my dice go? That is a dirty twenty. Dirty twenty. Okay, you notice that upon even trying to mention details, there is hesitation within uh, this dwarf's voice. Um, though he is like he's confident. You can say there's like a boat of confidence as he goes ahead and tells you, knowing that like if you figure out, then we'll be okay. That doesn't tell me anything. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if for anything, well, you were saying it from specifically from him, correct? Of like what he meant. Well, I just meant like generally, if I could try to piece together like what I know about this town. Oh, if okay. I could figure out what he meant. Okay. That's why he was Got asking it. what check you recommend I use. Okay, so if that is insight, um, at least upon what he'd say. So with also a twenty as well. You do kind of notice that even as you were going into town, that there were a lot of people, but there was a substantial more within like some sort of like red leather ish type of gear, um, that were pretty similar. Sorry, they didn't what, was really... in, what was in red leather gear? Like some people, like, oh. and they were like, there were some people that just looked a bit more different. Um, than standard civilians, but they all had matching like red tunics or leather armor. Sorry, I have to sneeze. Uh, How dare you? Do you need me to do a private role for this, or do you, uh, can, is this a can I do a public role to see if I'm familiar with them uh, for, with my guild knowledge? I would say do a history check if you're gonna go ahead and get some information about the town. At least of things you've heard. Okay. Uh, that's only a plus one, so let's see what I get. Natural 20. Ooh, nat 20. Oh, okay. Let's go. So, Phandalin is a small town. It's not anything as crazy as, like, Baldur's Gate or, like, Waterdeep. Um, but from your general information... You ha you only have really been able to hear certain rumors that there have been some upsets occurring within Phandalin. Um, and that it has to relate with a certain group of people um, known as the Red Band. And the Red Band, to you, is a group of bandits, pretty much. Um, so... If at least the information that's been gathered that there is a group of people here that do that look to be taking charge according to what you have of information uh, and it is this bandits this bandit group so in that case uh, Parth seems to be okay with the dwarf but is definitely side eyeing the people in the red armor then pretty much um and from your general information gathered upon rumors, it's like, it's best if you leave things alone or else more trouble follows, is what a common phrase is when referring to the Red Band. Mm -mm. Which makes sense. Mm -hmm. Parth seems to uh, watch the uh, dwarf long enough to make sure that the dwarf has uh, put the item away wherever it, he, uh, at least Parth is concerned is deemed safe before uh, looking around, seeming to change priorities to the party as he glances around and seems to debate what to, what he should uh, attempt to do here. Though he does look at the, the other four, just or sorry, the other three, uh, to see what they might be doing. Uh, Vlad takes a moment with the pouch of gold and just kind of punt, looks around for a bit and just goes, I think I will have to put this in my pack just so that it's secure and safe. Especially since we're out of sight on uh, 
of everyone else for the most part. And he carefully unslings his back. He just unslings his backpack and sets it down and just kind of makes sure that the bag of gold is cinched shut and then sets the gold in the bag, recloses it, and then looks over to realize that Parth is sitting on his shoulder going, Oh, hello there. Par Finally, Parth seems, to, see. Yeah, Parth seems to be watching Vlad cautiously, but seems to have at least some level of trust because the pseudo dragon seems to be quite calm sitting on uh, Vlad's shoulder as he puts the, thing, the bag away in his pack and seems to settle there. Okay, let's go ahead and close up this bag. And I'll just sling it on one of my shoulders, seeing as you claim, lay claim to my other shoulder. Okay. Well, Parth will shuffle over to let him sling it, get his backpack oh. on. <laughs> okay. So, Vlad fully slings his backpack on. And then looks over to uh, the other two and goes, Well, we have a couple options. We can either... See about checking in with Ekdon and let him know that the transaction has been completed. And actually, that would probably be best option to do. What do you think? I too thought of telling Alkan that the deed is done. Okay. Par seems to nod and bob his head up and down quite a few times, almost reminding you of a parrot. <laughs> hmm. Larry, okay, let's... so you guys are going to go check on Aknon and see how he's doing? Yep, and let him know that the transaction has been completed. All right, then. So yep. So if you guys want to just go ahead and make your way on over, then. Um, as you make your way towards the... Um, uh, uh, do, you, do you take the standard route you have been taking, or do you go a different... Um, uh, or do you we'll go take along the shortcut the road? where we cut across the grass again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Sounds good, then. Uh, well, that's that's the case, then. You do go ahead, and you just kind of traverse along the outskirt of it. Um, wherever Marshall wants to go ahead and... Oh, wait, here, let me go ahead and uh, open that for you guys. Um, there you go. I'll move, I'll move Marshall on over, because... He is BRB for a moment. Yeah, I think his breakfast finally came in. Yay. Uh, so as you go ahead and make your way on over to the um, the sleeping giant, um, you do see that um, the usual people that are that you did meet up with along with Akon are no longer there. And you see that like another like female like dwarf, though with like a bit more of like darker hair than the other she's like wiping down tables and everything and she's like oh hello there how can i help you Ooh. parth looks uh... quite pointedly towards i'm assuming Agnon's still laying there no no the only person that's here is the, oh. the this uh, dwarven lady in that case parth is literally like turning his head and looking everywhere in confusion so we are here to we we were here not too long ago with another lady here named Mary. Uh, we had her take a look at a uh, at a dra uh, at a friend of ours, uh, Aknon. Uh, we were told that uh, we were told that I, they might either be here or somewhere else. Uh, but do you happen to know where they might have gone? Oh, uh, if you're going to. To figure out where Mary is at in Aknon, uh, they are actually within uh, Darren's house right now. Um, they're making sure to pay close attention to him and keep them out uh, out of the um, the common eye, you know. Just making sure that everything is fine. Um, but if you have any sort of messages or so, um, I would probably not recommend um, being too much around that area, as they just want to make sure that he's being well protected and you know taken care of you know right we are companions of his okay i can definitely go ahead and let him get him a message before we go ahead and open since uh, i'm basically just about to get started for the uh, for all the different usuals that go around here right right uh 
I believe in I believe introductions are or, are in order since uh you offered to pass message. I am Vladimir. Uh behind me is Marshall and I uh, and Nora Norlor. And the pseudo here is uh is Parth. Parth chirps when his name is mentioned. Well, nice to meet you. My name is uh, Grista, and I run this tavern here, the Sleeping Giant. <laughs> it's not much, but it'll do for you. Um, it's a it's a nice little place. It is nice little place. <laughs> well, by the way, does Parth a... notice that there's any blood and mess still left on the table from earlier when Aknon was laying on it? The place looks completely clean, like almost spotless, like from the moment you arrived on in. And good question. I'm pretty sure Parth can understand Draconic. He just can't speak it. Uh, yes. Oh, okay. Uh. Unfortunately, my PDF is not helping me very much because every time I press page up, it literally jumps over the page I'm trying to read. Ooh. I hate this thing. It auto scroll. It snaps to the next page when you get too close to the bottom, and I literally can't see the part of the page that I'm trying to read. I don't know why Adobe insists on this snap scrolling thing instead of letting me just smooth scroll from one page to the other. Oh, languages understands common and draconic, but can't speak them. Mm -hmm. Thank I you. I just cause... looked up pseudo dragon some stat box. Yeah, so I do have common. Okay. Or curious. sorry, Draconic, yes. I was curious if you could speak them, sorry. Yeah. Um, well, if there isn't anything else or so, I can definitely go ahead and assist you with any sort of drinks if you want. Uh, or if you have any questions about, since you look a bit like strange folk around here. Uh, yes, we, we all gather from different parts. Uh, I personally came from across sea. And uh, we were actually on our way over to a. Uh, we were actually on our way over to uh, to a guild, and we got into a bit of a truffle. Our companion Aknon got hurt, and we made sure that he got medical attention. And this was the first place we were at. So. No, that definitely makes sense. Mary is definitely one of our um, pseudo doctors here, um, but she's still equally respected. Um, but if you're looking to spend some downtime or so, then like I said, I can bury up some drinks and you know get any questions or so that you want. Uh, Vladimir just kind of looks back to the group, the the other two for a brief moment, and looks back forward, going, "Can we put pin in that?" I will cert we will certainly take you up on that offer, but we do have message to pass first. Okay, sounds good. Um, well, if you want, then he's definitely, he's only a house uh, over. Uh, not the small one there, that's my house, but the one that's right next to it, the bigger one. So if you want, uh, and that would be on the, um, right behind where that tree is at. So, or where the tree is behind, but... She goes to mention that it's like, well, if you if you want to go ahead and um, spend some time or so, then this is a very good place to do it. And um, yeah, hope you have yourselves a great day then. As she just goes ahead and basically starts doing some final preparations. All right, we I suppose we'll be back soon. I uh, and, also post uh, a sidebar to you there, uh, Ace. When you get a second. Yes, I'm seeing that right now. Dang it, Cutbox, stop doing that. Alright. So let's go ahead and make our way out. Okay. So as you go ahead and make your way out, let me go ahead and open the door for you. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. You notice that there's actually one person about to go ahead to reach for the door to open it, and you see that it's a group of four people that are wearing reddish like armor um it is in some areas or not um as i'm going ahead and get change the the music may i so just like, look at them through the through the window yeah you can see that they're through the window and that they're basically just kind of like 
there was semi silently talking a little bit. Um, and one of the people that is like hooded a little bit with a red hood, he like opens it like, Oh, what do we have here? A bunch of strangers from unknown lands entering into our turf. Um, if you'd be so kind, we're just looking to get a couple drinks. So how about you head on, head on out of here? The character looks to the keep on to see if he's going to be able to see if he's getting like nervous at this at the conversation. Uh, I'm sorry, I wasn't quite sure what you were asking. Uh, the keeper um, of I the was... inn or the sleeping giant? Does she look like she's getting anxious or upset? Does she look like these these people are going to be dangerous to her? Um, she just. I, from what you can see, I don't think she's really paid attention. She's just still kind of like focusing on getting like glasses cleaned and everything. So long as the drinks, that is fine. Well, then I suggest you move out the door. It's not fit for two, I suppose. <laughs> no, you are absolutely right. Uh, can't fit two people through door frame. And then, Marshall, do you move as well, or...? Oh, yeah, obviously. I need, a, I need to get off the chair. Fantastic. Um, welcome to Fandolin. And as all four of them basically just kind of go on through, you see one of them purposefully nudge you in the shoulder, Marshall, as he walks on in, and they just big, give a big old chuckle. Uh, can I... Ooh, I want to check to see if anything was stolen. I I don't see a reason to fight these people, but the the fact that they were a bit rude makes me a bit suspicious of them. Uh, if you want to check your personal belongings, so go ahead. Yeah, you, uh, yeah, I'll I'll check I'll check them. Okay, Speaking so of... from your person. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so from your personal belongings, you actually don't notice anything was stolen. It's just kind of more of like a a dickish thing of like <laughs> like it just looks like it's just basically like a bullying sort of thing like I like nudge you in the shoulder purposefully even though we're passing by mm. yeah if, oh, every, if everybody wants on? to roll an insight check if you get a 10 or higher you'll notice a reaction from Perth there or Parth I'll roll an insight check uh why yep. is my game bar activating what the fuck okay Sorry, hold on, give me a sec, guys. Okay, there we go. <laughs> my my Xbox game thing activated, and I'm like, what is going on? Uh, are you rolling two there, or arrows? Yep, I yeah. rolled... I rolled... Yeah. Uh... You all easily see. You notice yeah. that when you walk by uh, these people, Parth seems to be giving them, like, all these people, a really, like, contentious stare. Like with the, giving them a side eye, and uh, Vlad especially can tell because he can feel the pseudo dragon tense up. That you seem to have avoided something bad. Mm. Parth seemed to tense up quite a fair bit, and and looked like he was about ready to either fight or flight. It, it's okay, little one. It's okay. We obviously we're not trying to cause trouble. We're just trying to get by. Either way, you guys can tell there's something that Parth knows about these people that he does not like. Mm -hmm. uh, at that point, Vlad just kind of pauses for a moment and uh, he goes, all right, let's see if we can't find that house that uh, the nice innkeeper mentioned to us about. Uh, the one that you're talking about, if you follow my marker, it's right here. Okay. So as we as we start making our way over with Parth still on Vlad's shoulders, Vlad takes a brief moment and just kind of looks over to Parth and surprisingly enough... Uh, he speaks in Draconic going, Is there something you know, Parth? Parth tries to respond, but the flashing images are just too nonsensical to make much sense out of. 
whatever it is, it's mm -hmm. too complex for a pseudo, pseudo dragon to convey. Yeah. Uh, you do actually notice as you make your way to this house that um, there is a group of people that are within the little small uh, segment of this area. Um, and, in the, and where the well is at, you do see that there is a man being harassed um, by some people within this red clothing as he's just been like, he's like, please, I'm just trying to get some water uh, as they're basically like pushing him around and everything. And one of the bigger grunts like knocks over his bucket and starts laughing. Uh, uh, the best I can do for pseudo dragon translation is, is if you were to try to boil the contents of what Parth tried to convey, the best thing you can your mind can pick out of your deep vocabulary is skullduggery. Skullduggery. It's a word. If you want, you can look it up in Webster's Dictionary. But yeah, I'll I'll have to look it up because I'm just sitting here like that. I have not heard. I uh, know of the word. I just forgot what it meant. Hmm, yeah. That tracks. It's like underhanded or unscrupulous behavior, aka trickery. Shout out to Pop okay. Drop though for telling me that that word exists. Yeah. Shout out okay. to Google for letting me search it. Yep. Okay. So, <laughs> I got in it. other words, it, it, you can get a general, oh, it's those kind of people. Oh. And in Draconic. Uh, Vladimir speak, speaks up again, going, "Oh, one of so these are those types of guys. Gotcha." Uh, mm. So, do you, do you do anything else before you try to enter the house, or uh, Vladimir just kind of looks over his shoulder at the scene, just kind uh, of like a side eye type of thing, just for a brief moment before uh, entering into the house. Uh, while well, he's doing that, uh, Parth does double check uh, the backpack to make sure it's been undisturbed. Like it's the, been like, undisturbed. So um, the, it's still latch closed and everything. Like the it's still button closed and everything. Or yes, uh, yeah, laced yeah. closed. I don't know what the term is when you use a belt. <laughs> uh, just been latched. I would say. Um, yeah, like everything like doesn't seem like everything still seems to be intact for your personal belongings. Like it doesn't look like anything's been stolen or whatnot. It's just but as it does, dick. But for with the way this backpack is designed, um, it's only it only has a single latch in the front middle, but each side, each on the sides of the top flap can actually be like picked up big enough for a for Parth's head to stick in and look inside if he needed to. In that case, Parth would have stuck his head and just to make sure the the bag is still there, which I'm assuming it is Ace. Up, uh, yeah. Everything is in contact, but like every everything that you can recall that is within your belongings is there, still there. The like, Lotus of changed. Parth's understanding would only be the bag and jerky. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's the only things he would be aware to check. But okay, uh, so, sorry, Ace. So we derailed you twice. Go ahead and do the description of opening the door. Okay. So as you go ahead to open the door. Um, well, it's actually not even really too much of like an opening that's there. It's more like it goes into a bit of an atrium. Um, as there's not really like a door there. But you do notice that Darren is actually within there along with like another man. Uh, as they're both kind of discussing details. And it's like, oh, I'm back so soon already. Um, yes, we came to pass message to Eknon that transaction is is completed uh before we continue we you were mentioning something about somebody asking for water and was being shoved around yeah so in the little square um like uh, where the water uh, where the little um the well is here yeah so that person there um that person is the one that's basically been like being bullied and everything and i'm assuming it's by yet another guy wearing the red armor red yes it's armor. by the, the three people around him can i uh one on them oh uh, sorry what was that may i eavesdrop on them uh it's pretty it's pretty easy to hear them like they're being uh -huh. pretty loud um as per purpose um but you can definitely tell like 
they're shoving like this person to the ground and everything, kicking the bucket away as you're going ahead and having this conversation. Yeah, uh, you but can they tell that Parth is yeah. swiveling around, looking at them. Yeah, they don't notice you just yet, um, as they're more paying attention to this person. Is the door still currently open? There, there's no door. It's like I said, it opens up to like a little bit of atrium area, uh, as uh... there probably was a door at some point, but there now isn't. Uh, and Darren does go to you saying, like, well, if you're going to do it, then here, I'll just give it to him because we want to make sure he's not discovered, you know. Be bad news. Um, so if you have anything, I'll take it to him and let him know. Uh, Parth seems to nudge uh, Vlad gently uh, and head can't uh, uh, back towards the guys uh, wearing the leather armor and emotionally vlad can feel great contention from the pseudo dragon of uh rising levels of danger and, and mm. uh the feeling of uh i really need to expand my language for feelings of words what is it, this the feeling that what is the uh word for the evocation of the feeling that you are being washed your privacy is being invaded what's that word called again you just mentioned that someone's watching you, or like that you're being like, there's a I guess like spied on. It. Yeah, there's an e there's an emotional word for it, but invaded or pervaded or something like that is the word. But you you feel like that your conversation is being invaded upon, but even yeah. though that there's not really any evidence to back it up, like there well, is that it's subtle from feeling. Parth. This is what yeah. Parth is delivering through his telepathy. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, oh, how did you get the dice? Mm. So, how do you respond, Vlad? Uh, Vlad just kind of pauses for a second, and he, uh, he looks at Darren just kind of a with a single digit up with his paw on. I'm sorry, give me a moment. And he kind of looks over towards Parth as Parth is relaying this uh, telepathic uh, message. And he just kind of pauses for a moment, thinks about it, and goes, well, if that's the case, then... then we'll wait. I'd rather do this in person. Parth seems to nod, uh, nod, seeming to that uh, this is exactly what he was wanting. So, in the meantime, uh, as of right now, he he pauses once more. He's going to uh, he's trying to figure out a way to word this. So how is our companion holding up? Oh, uh, well, he's stable for right now, but only time will tell with the infection. Um, we gave him some standard herbs, and um, that's pretty much all we can really do. Okay. Uh, next time you see him, let him know his companions will be checking on him periodically. And... You'll know where to find us. Okay, sounds good then. Well, you best be on your way then. Yes. Um, as this conversation is happening, um, do the like, a Nor Laura and also Marshall. Are you just standing outside, just watching the bandits, or? I I'm like tuning into the conversation to the bandit, but I'm not not like actively listening. But like, I move my character just so you know you know, where I'm looking. Maybe. Like where the tension is. Yeah. So you're standing there, and like you're you're. Are you focusing your attention on the bandits, or are you focusing your attention on uh, Vlad? Um, physically on Vlad, but like realistically, I'm trying to listen to the bandits. Okay. I don't want to look like I'm listening in other convos specifically. Okay. Yeah. My so. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I kind of just, just try and be non-chalantly 
looking like she's just relaxing, but she is trying to be like a lookout to see if anyone else is paying attention. Okay. Well, as you're going ahead and just going through your own perceptions of just the whole situation, you do see that the tiefling that is part of one of the bandits, he does like kick away at this citizen and he basically rushes into his own house that's like right around the corner um like basically like sending him off in fear um which let me go ahead and move him on in yeah, so oh, the guy's he to his house yeah he basically like runs away like quickly um without his bucket and uh you do see that everyone does start to laugh and everything as the tiefling does a little like theater gesture and everything and as he bows down he does notice you two. Uh, you two. He's like, "Oi, what are you staring at?" I just noticed you dance, and I turned my head. Uh, the but he turns you turn your head away from him. No, like I know I. That's my response. I like I look when they dance. And it's like, oh, I just saw you do that twirl. I wasn't really paying attention. What little twirl? And he approaches you closely with, like, he pulls out a little dagger and everything. And he's like, are you calling me a prissy? And I'm just saying you did, like, a little flourish at the end. That was kind of cool. And you do see the other two start to approach you pretty closely and surround a little bit. That's really it. Uh, ooh, that's skipping a little bit. Hold on. I uh, like yeah, so as they go kind of surrounding you a little bit, and it's just like, well then, since you saw a little bit of a performance here, I assume that, you know, a little bit of a do is made. Because the performance ain't free there, Lossie. So, give you some stuff and bugger off. I'll think about it. Well, you don't got time to think about it. As you see the, um... The bit more of a burly man who's got like a maul over his shoulders, like gr like growls growls at you. I shouldn't have said anything. Fuck. Vladimir turns around and steps out, notices the commotion, and goes, "Do we have problem here, gentlemen?" You can yeah. tell at this point that Parth is glowering completely. Oh, we've got a problem here. Your little friend here with the white hair is calling me a prissy because I'm having some fun. Hey, I never said it was a bad thing. Well, either way, it's your it's your money or your life. Gentlemen, gentlemen, I do not believe we need to go to such extremes. Well, if your friend didn't say a word and just told him to move on, we wouldn't be having this conversation, we would be. Now then. As he pull as he like points his dagger towards you, it's like Or do I reckon I have to make a pelt out of you? As he spits in your at your feet. Vladimir just kinda stares down at where uh the I assume it was the tiefling. Yes, it's the spat. tiefling. Yeah, at where the where the tiefling spat at him, looks back up and goes, "You know, for every silver piece that I, if I had a silver piece for every time somebody made a threat like that to me, look, I do. My companions here and I do not want to start anything. We're just passing by." This is nothing to be worked up about. Let us just forget that this happened. Carry on our way. We're here not to cause trouble. Uh, go ahead and roll me persuasion. Or diplomacy, whichever. It, it would basically be that. Oh, oh, it is diplomacy in this game, right? That <laughs> persuasion yep. is diplomacy these, this, in this system. What? Oh. Oh yeah, I do not. I do not see diplomacy in this sheet. No, there a uh, diplomacy it's, it's, in another it's game. Persuasion. Persuasion. It's oh, persuasion. Okay, persuasion. It, 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 diplomacy became persuasion in Five E. Yeah. Yes. 
Because diplomacy just sounds a bit. Uh, that'll be 18 total. Mm -hmm. He, like, basically, he basically, like, walks up like you, like he's, like, you know how, like, in, uh, like, animes with Yakuza and everything, like, they, like, stare you down, tilt their head at you, and they look up mm -hmm. and down. And he, like, puts away his dagger, and he's just like, you cause any more trouble, and you'll be f facing against the, against the quiver now, you hear? As he, like, snaps his fingers, and all three of them start to walk away. By the way, at this, at the point that the, that, uh, Vlad and the ty t tiefling were talking to each other, uh, Vlad could feel that Parth moved a little bit to put part of his body behind him. Parth wasn't hiding, more specifically Parth was, uh, keeping part of his body behind, uh, Vlad so that his collar wasn't visible. In After af, oh, go ahead. In other words, Parth didn't want them to see the the insignia on his collar. Af and after the three left, Vladimir just kind of stands there and just goes. He just lets out this sigh. So and just <laughs> he just goes. Well, I didn't think I'd have to tap into that again. Okay, for the record, I they just they started it. They well, were gonna, we... no matter what I did, they were gonna probably try to insinuate a fight. Oh, the look, if I, if what I'm understanding from what Parth has told me, these guys are always itching for a fight. So, it would be best to try to avoid, uh, I know you weren't trying to be confrontational, but they take anything as confrontation, so... Eventually, they'll get what they deserve. Yep. Now, let's go find the inn so we can get ourselves held up for a little while at least. Up until uh, Eknon gets better. As if on cue, Parth seems to start uh, turning on Vlad's shoulder, acting as a teeny tiny little uh, uh, tour guide. So at this point, Vladimir just kind of looks over. Does he is Parth doing like a like a, a pointer stance, like pointing yep. his muzzle? Okay. Pointer stance, just like a dog. Okay. So, all right, let's get moving then. Oh. Uh, Waiting on GM. Everything gay ice. Uh. Maybe you had to make an emergency pause? Maybe. Probably. I don't see text in any of the locations. Uh, maybe he had to oh. emergency FK. Oh, Ace got, Ace got disconnected. Uh, oh. Well, something's up on the stream itself. Uh, in that oh, case, really? I need to take a restroom break. Can you just let him know when he gets back that I'm AFK for a moment? Yes. Okay. Yes. Best opportunity to do it is right now, so be right back. Oh, his computer turned off for some reason. Ooh. Oh, so he has to go through the rebuild. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll be right back. All right. I think we're going to be good to go now, everybody. So, sorry for the technical difficulties, but we are back, and we got Breaker back here. So, Breaker, if you want to go ahead and say hello. Hello, hello. Oh, don't, play, don't break your back. It hurts. <laughs> I'm going to turn you up just a little bit from my end, uh, but right. other than that, we should be good to go. Uh, but for those of you uh, who uh, are joining in new uh, and were not able to catch what happened just prior, uh, there's a little bit of technical issue that occurred from my end, um, but we got it fixed. And it got into the situation of around where we were just at the Barthens position, uh, provisions at... Um, well, we were starting off there with the party basically delivering the goods that Aknon had retrieved from the Goblin Horde. In addition, they had kind of went on back to the Sleeping Giant, where originally they had dropped off Aknon, uh, leading into a conversation with Grista, the main owner and the bar waitress uh, for them just to kind of like hopefully relax a little bit um 
and be able to understand where Aknon is being held. After getting in a small little confrontation with some of these uh, ruffians that are around, we do end up with a situation of everything being updated and something of being known that a group of bandits known as the Red Band Ruffians uh, are causing some trouble here in Phandalin. Um, and it seems like your party is a little bit in hot water with them already, but we'll see how it continues. Hmm. Uh, but for now, we'll go ahead and do a bit of a time skip on over to Breaker's character, uh, whose name is uh, escaping me at this time. Um, Vulcan. Uh, Vulcan. Vulcan. That's right, yes. Vulcan. I need to try and find some way to uh, edit the file uh, there. Possible. There was a way for me to do it through here. I, I can't quite recall though. Um, for the model, I think it was I can rename the model. Mm -hmm. Um, here, GM tools, rename. There we go. Oh, I just did the thing. Oh, and then also breaker. As just for one thing, uh, there is going to be a private chat. Uh, that I forgot to create for you here. Ah, okay. So that is successful within my Discord, and it's only going to be between you and uh and the admins. Okie dokie. So okay, I think we are good to go. So continuing off from our adventure, um, Vulcan, uh, after discussing with the party and dropping off, um, Aknon at this little bar of sorts um you make your way on over to the center of town where you are directed to go to the stone wall inn to just just to secure a a place of lodging for your party um and as you make your way on over to the central bits of the town you do notice that there is um a lot of things actually going on with the town itself as you see that um, this, as you see that there is what looks to be a big sort of shrine in the middle of the area, um, that there seems to be like one or two people that are at praying towards something. Um, and on the far ends, you see that there are some people within red sort of attire um, that kind of matches some battle armor that are just kind of like looking around and keeping on guard and with a woman passing by like uh it seems to be of a draconic sort of creature giving a snarl towards her as she quickly scurries off away um and going to the shrine hmm. uh, in a bit of a feared state um and you notice that the red building that you are right next to is in fact the stone wall inn there. okay uh, at the moment here, I kind of observe you know, what's uh, going on, and do I recognize what the uh, statue and shrine or anything of that symbology is? Um, you can go ahead and do a religion check if you want. Okay, religion. That and... Plus one. Okay, so 18. 18. Okay. Mm -hmm. Alright, let me go ahead and pull up. Um, so, what you can see here is uh, as you approach closer, which I'll move your character closer a little bit, you see that there is a... Let's see. Um, there is what looks to be a young-looking elf uh, who is kind of praying towards the shrine along with the woman that just kind of approached it. And you can tell that you may not be able to tell exactly who the deity is, but you can tell by some of the different things resonating at the shrine um, that they resemble something of luck and good fortune. Hmm. Right. Uh, 
the does it look like uh, uh anyone is kind of finishing up there that wouldn't take you know offense at being asked a question uh well you do notice that the um the acolyte within the black clothing she does like stop for a second and then just take notice of you and she's like oh i don't think we've seen vulpines around here often um how can i help you there i was just uh wondering what uh this uh, shrine uh it was dedicated to oh um this is really our only sort of temple that we have here um it's dedicated towards timora a goddess of luck and good fortune uh, uh very good i it would seem that uh, uh, they or another uh, deity was watching over our uh, party. Perhaps you can give uh, them thanks for us. Um, yes, definitely. Um, and you see that she's kind of like, even though she's like, huh, like, thank you for, like, and not like saying that there's at least some sort of deity that's watching around. She does kind of like have a bit of un unevenness to her. Um, it's like, is there any other, like, questions that you had about Timora, or just in general about the town? It doesn't seem like you're someone who's usually around here. Yeah. Well, it does seem that uh, many people are a bit on edge. Forgive me, you uh, don't seem, uh, uh, too relaxed yourself. Well... Ever since, um, she's kind of been uh, hard to mention. It's like, if we were wanting to make this more private, I could definitely do so. It's just, it's a bit roomy out here. I was, uh, uh seeking a place to stay. Perhaps the inn over here? Oh, yes. The stone wall inn is, um, is actually fantastic. I can lead you in if, if maybe. And she proceeds to walk on over to the um, to the inn itself and step on in. Um, and as you step on in, um, you see that like someone closes the door like as they enter, and there's a little bit of lively music, um, not too loud, but like it's nice and calming a little bit, um. And it's at least something that is there to help keep with, like, a bit more, like, a happier applause. Um, and there's only really a couple people that are sitting in here. And as the music kind of strums, she uh, directs you towards the front counter. Uh, and, sorry, I'm trying to get all the music and everything to switch around. <laughs> so... Mm -hmm. Uh, she directs you towards the main counter. Is like, we should be able to enter or uh, get a room for here. Um, and if we want to discuss further of anything, um, I'm more than free to um, talk to you about it. Uh, boy, thank you. Okay. And do you do you approach closer to the um, the counter? I do. Okay. So let's see. So, from uh, entering on in, do you see that there is, uh, looks to be a human-like woman just kind of prepping stuff at the counter. Um, a couple of, like, ales and swords, and she looks up and she's like, oh, um, a priestess, I did not realize that you would be here. And uh, She raises her hand, it's like, no worries. Um, I was um, working with, um, oh, sorry, what was your name? Vulcan? Yeah, there, yes, uh, Vulcan. Uh, I'm looking for some residency, um, and uh, the uh, innkeeper's uh, she's like, oh, well, yeah, I can definitely go ahead and assist you with that. Uh, how many of you will be here? Is it just you, or are there others? Myself and uh, three others. Three others, okay. Well, if we're going to get a room for four, they're pretty cramped a little bit, but we can squeeze in about, uh, I could do two people per room, um, which will be about a silver each. Mm, uh, yes, and uh, is uh, board included in that price? 
Uh, it would just be a silver per room, <laughs> unfortunately. That's all it really is. Yeah. Uh, very well. Uh, always uh, good to have the details. Thank you. And um, do you hand on off uh, the, the payment for her? or? There, I do. Okay. So as you go ahead and like hand it off to this um, innkeeper, uh, their hand is a little bit shaky too. Um, even with like the gentle smile that they bring. Um, so they like pull out like two keys and it's like, uh, if you're going to be having them for another per uh, group, then you can give them this key and the other one will be for your room. Uh, thank you. Uh, upstairs are they? Yes. Yes, they are. Don, you are a bit quiet on my end. Uh, any better? Mm. Sounds good to me. I, I turned you up myself, so... Yeah, yeah, I have to turn you up on my end. Give me a second okay. here. That might be a little better for you guys. Oh, way better. Oh, oh there we way go. Better. Way better. Okay. Yeah, on a couple other discords there, I was uh, a little bit on the loud side. And so I had turned down my transmit volume. Okay, beautiful. Mm -hmm. All right, so with these keys, um, the priest says it's just like, if you're looking for more formalities, which I apologize, um, my name is uh, Ger uh, Sister Garel. So her name is spelled G as in George, A R A E L E. G A R. Uh, A E L E. A E L E. Got it. Yep. And um, we usually don't like talking in public about the issues here, but recently a bunch of a ruffian group has been overtaking our town. Or should um, we be in the inn as well? We're not no. there yet. This is happening okay. while we were yeah, no. busy. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, Sorry. this yeah, this is happening as we were doing our thing, so this is separate. We did the okay. time warp and changed changed perspectives. Okay. Um, but continuing on, um, mm -hmm. they've only really caused us trouble here, and it's not really no one no one really able to assist us in this manner. Um, and the innkeeper's like, sister, we can't speak openly about this. You know what they've done to people. Then. Uh... Perhaps we should uh, uh, head upstairs. I turn to the innkeeper. It seems um, you have uh, opinions on this as well. Yes, um, as the innkeeper pauses, like, there's no one down here yet, but they've been causing a bunch of rampartness, stealing supplies and just flaying people in the streets. It's the worst of it. Um, my My <laughs> father... Um, met the end of them, unfortunately. Hmm. As she, like, really just, like, grips down her, like, thumb and everything. I was, like, in frustration. And uh, the local authorities have done nothing. Our mayor, um, from what I've heard, he just sits in his office and does nothing. We don't have any guards. <laughs> We don't have any a sort of authority like that, because the ones that were here are gone. And where did they go? She says silent. A uh, snarl comes across my lips at the thought of such a dereliction of duty there by the local establishment and there in governance. That is not good. That is not how things should be. We don't really know who to contact at this point since our mayor should be able to take care of it, but he's not doing anything. If if you're an adventurer and you're within a group, can you rid us of this plague? I will speak with my comrades on this. I do not uh, think you will have much to worry about for very much longer. I despise uh, 
Uh, people like this. Uh, you do see um, uh, Garel. She like grips your hands, as in like a little like like kind of putting them together, like palm to palm, and she's like, "Thank you, if you're able to assist. Um, if this will give you any protection, um, I might as well give it off to you." As she gives you a um, a little necklace. And the necklace has what looks to be a a coin onto it, with an, a, a kind of um, mar a mark on it, and it has a little sickle with some wheat um, on the coin. It's like this should give you any sort of necessary protection. Yeah, thank you, sister. Uh, may I ask uh, what it is? I am not familiar with. Uh, these uh, symbols exactly. Uh, it is um, a, a mere protective charm, bringing good fortune to those who deserve it. There. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, there. Uh, slipping it uh, uh, beneath uh, my uh, outer cloak. Uh, there, as putting it on, over my head at this time may, may prove a little awkward. <laughs> right. It's like, well, I can go ahead and show you off to your room then, uh, the innkeeper responds. Um, it'll be just up the stairs. There, yes. Uh, that would uh, be uh, I appreciate. Sister, I give a motion that uh, allows her to either uh, follow it to discuss uh, more or to break off as she oh. is more comfortable. Oh, I would be flattered, but um, I don't want to leave the shrine away too long. You know, want to make sure it's intact and everything, you know? Sir, uh, but of course. Uh, perhaps uh, some other time we may uh, speak on this matter more. Of course. And you see that um, that she walks away um, and ex exits the tavern. Um, what is your passive perception? Uh, Checking. Passive is 12. Okay. You notice that, like, you didn't notice it before, but the way that she walks is hobbled a bit. Seems those uh, ruffians have gotten to her as well. If they haven't gotten to someone in this town, then it'd be a miracle on them. Uh, let me show you to your room, as the woman goes to uh, move up the stairs with you. Um, these are really the best rooms we have at this point. Um, and there are others within different sections, but these two specifically would be for you, uh, for your group. Yeah. Thank you. Um, it is appreciated. Would is there anything else that you need help with today? Would you mind telling me more about these ruffians? How long have they been plaguing your city? Uh, she first takes a look into each of the rooms quickly to make sure that there's no one around. And she's like, okay. They've been around for about a month or so. Um, I knew a friend who was on watch for the town and um, there was just so many of them. Hmm. And uh... They came in force, you know, I'm saying? They came marching in like an army at this point. Um, mm. Just leaving their colors around everywhere. Um, even marking on the important buildings of where they meet. As and you can probably tell with the roofing. Yes. And uh, their leader, is he here? No one really knows who the leader is. Um, some people think it's a certain um, a certain humanoid by the name of the Quiver. Um, legend has it he's quick as a fox. And he's keen as an as an eagle. I find it funny that somebody's saying quick as a fox to a fox. <laughs> so, yeah. I would like to see him if they did. 
quick mystery matches reality. <laughs> the quiver. What a strange name for to give oneself. Yeah, it's usually any sort of people that, or at least this is from rumors that I know of. Sat um, but any sort of person that makes a name for themselves give uh, is given a nickname within their within their group. Um, but I, I should hope that he is good with a uh, bow and then uh, not weak in the knees for his sake. Well, from what I've heard, he's a skilled archer, so if you're going to be traveling around here, I suggest you make your business and, and make way. Very well. Has uh, anyone tried to contact uh, the uh, regional government? Sadly, no. Um, our usual ways of communication are through the mayor and he has a set of eagle system or for um you know being able to send messages out via carrier bird but that was one of the first things they took care of here and we haven't been able to get any communication outside of it and uh, they prevent anyone from uh, leaving town i assume yeah we've had a couple people try to leave and Usually those who are entered on in are welcomed, but those who leave are not so welcomed. <laughs> well, and then uh, we shall see how things uh, fare. Thank you for the rooms. I see that you, uh, you have many things to attend to downstairs. My tone uh, belies the fact of my words I mean that I can tell that you are trying to or that you're needing to keep uh, uh, an eye on the door to uh, see who all enters or not right and won't keep you any longer thank you so much and she proceeds to uh, walk down the stairs um, so anything that uh, you will be uh, doing in addition or there, uh, I am going to uh, thoroughly inspect uh, the rooms there, uh, seeing as how she was already uh, leery of other people uh, there. I want to see if there's anything else that might be around, what I can see from the, the uh, windows, uh, any sort of easy access up and the like. Um, well, yeah, you can go ahead and investigate the rooms, then. Make, give me a investigation check. Alright. That plus... Uh, investigation plus one, so 20. Nice. So, as you look around these rooms, um, just making sure to double check and triple check everything, hey, these aren't really like super like comfy rooms like you're used to um mm -hmm. these are very much like these are just like a good enough place to stay in um nothing like super fancy but i will say though that um there's not really anything unusual about the room just that one room does have a nicer bed than the others um, while the others are kind of like hay cots, uh, while yours has actually like a bit more of like an actual nice tone to it, mm -hmm. but there are enough beds to fit like all of you. All right. And there, I, uh, given uh, my status and the fact that uh, the coins first came out of my own purse, uh, I'm going to take the uh, initiative with the nicer bed. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, go figure. Oh, the royalty one for the nicer bed. Big surprise. Yeah. I am going to uh, uh, use prestidigitation on the various uh, other beds and sheets and whatnot and to clear them uh, 
magically of any additional grime or an duster or whatnot. Okay, this will take you some time uh, as you go ahead and just start making sure to clean up and everything, any little spits and spans and stains that are going through across the, the bedding and such. Um, <laughs> Can you imagine being one of the maids coming in? The get we had a guest over and the bed is cleaner. <laughs> yeah. Um, as yeah, <laughs> it, well, it be it was already clean as it is, but it's like you can tell it was like it, it's not the best quality of stuff. But you using magic upon it does make it finer quality. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And as you are within this room, cleaning, mm -hmm. you do notice that um, there was like a bit of like confrontation that did occur. Because you did see that, like, the ruffians that, like, were around this, um, the, the well, they kind of, like, went off towards a certain, uh, area, and then kind of marched forward into, like, into, um, the center of town. But you don't really know, like, what they were, like, talking about, you know? But it did mm -hmm. look like that they first went off to a house that was close to the sleeping giant that you were at where Akanon was, and mm -hmm. then they just kind of walked towards the middle of town. Okay. Uh, also, as I'm going along there, uh, after cleaning it, the bed, I also use mending on uh, I, on basically everything. Okay, so what specifically are you fixing, though? Because there's not uh, really anything broken. Here. Loose threads uh, there, uh, dented uh, wood, sagging uh, cords uh, there, just kind of tightening them up, uh, rebinding uh, the uh, threading on them. They're making uh, them taut for better be uh, comfort in the beds. Okay, so mending does take about a moment, uh, about a minute per mm -hmm. cast. So we'll go ahead and you'll just be mending and making sure that everything is fitted nice and good and that there's better quality towards it uh the um the pillows and everything and as you're doing that we'll go back to the group mm -hmm. um so going back to where we were um you just met up with uh darren and checked in with uh Aknon, and after the bandits kind of dispersed towards the farther direction you said that you were going to go check out the inn correct yeah so basically kind of recap a little bit it would be vladimir basically just says well i'm pretty sure this would not be the last time we'll have this kind of encounter with them a close so... encounter with the grift's kind yes of course, that's not in character. I had to just drop that line. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's now that we've conducted what we needed to do, let's get let's make our way over to the inn. I'm pretty sure Vulcan is waiting for us with rooms. All right. So you guys all decide you're gonna make your way on over now. Mm-hmm. Okay, so if you guys move your characters up in the direction, and then you can go to the center of town. Uh, there is one thing my character would like to do real quick. Oh, uh, yes, uh, Nalor, what, what would you like to do? Well, the man was trying to get blood into his pocket when he got confronted, right? So, uh, so, yes. so, so get the water and bring it to the man. Okay, so mm -hmm. you do you see that there is the bucket, like, still, like, mixed in with the dirt and everything? Um near like about like five feet from the um the uh well and there's not really like any water in there it's just kind of like stuck with like grime and everything um along with there being like a dent on the side of the bucket oh so, so it's a metal if... bucket hmm? metal bucket yes uh from where you saw like the, the ruffian like kick the bucket and everything um not figuratively like literally kick the bucket <laughs> Uh, so, if you wanted to, you could go ahead and clean up the interiors. That way, that when you go get water for them, there's not like any dirt inside. Yeah, actually, uh, Parth curiously observes Nori. She picks up the bucket, shakes the dirt out of it, and 
starts trying to scrape it out with her fingers. Uh, and after watching her for a couple of moments, uh, uh, Nor sees a flicker of uh, magical light uh, dash over from uh, 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 Vlad's uh, shoulder as uh, she sees predigitation hit the bucket, making it completely clean. She looks over and goes, thank you, Pop. And then she goes to draw water. Okay. Uh, as you go ahead to draw water, you do see that actually the, the mill looks really nice. Uh, it's surprisingly well kept, And you like kind of look on, like, uh, you go ahead and set the, the water and you pull the crank on the side of it as the water goes, uh, as the bucket goes down to the water. And it starts to get a bit heavier uh, since it's full. Uh, but you are able to success, as, successfully get a bucket of water. Um, and as you're kind of looking into it, you do see like this, like it's cold to the touch. Um, and it, it looks actually very clean. All right, so you know, carefully brings us to the building the man ran into. Yes, so it would be this one right here. Part just seems to watch curiously from uh, Vlad's shoulder, seeming rather intrigued by Nora's behavior. See, so, uh... I was going to say, at this point, Vladimir just kind of looks over at Parth and goes, okay, I see what's going on. And just actually moves over to right beside uh, Norlor. Uh, it's safe to knock on the door without dropping the bucket. Yeah, so you knock on the door, um, and there's not really like a an answer for a moment, but then you do hear the door like slightly creak open, uh, and then opens up a bit more. It's just it's the guy who is a little bit like still kind of trembling a little bit. It's like I'm I'm sorry, I don't think I quite know you. Are you new here? Yes, I notice you've dropped this while trying to get water while I hand over the full pail. Oh, oh, um, thank you. And he takes the bucket from you. He's like, you're a kind soul. Um, he like looks left and right a little bit. It's like, are you here to take out these ruffians? Not directly, but I am definitely thinking about it. But we need to heal up ourselves. Uh, upon hearing this, he puts down the bucket carefully and he goes into his um, pockets and he hands you uh, five silver. He's like, if you're going to take them out, then thank you. And Vladimir slowly peeks his head around the corner, keeping his voice low so the man can see. And he goes, it is something that we are considering. There's no action we can take right now, but we are looking into it. Still, you you helped me out, and I'd like to pay you at least in one silver, if that's helpful. You don't necessarily have to. But I want to. Whatever you feel is right, I'll be okay. Alright, he hands you one silver then, and he says thank you, as he goes to close the door. And right. Vladimir just moves his head out of the way so his snoot so his snout doesn't get bashed in by the door. <laughs> <laughs> oh my snoot. <laughs> okay, with that done, now she's ready to head to the uh inn. All right. All right. Let's make sure Marshall's okay too. And uh Vladimir moves over to Marshall. You doing good over here? We're about yeah. ready to hit. We're about ready to head over to the inn. Let's go. Yeah, I'm just kind of taking in that whole interaction still. Yes, it it was a bit uh, scary. You did your best to try and avert situation, but these types of ruffians, they're always itching for a fight. Yep. We have people like, like, the... like I swear, no matter what I said, even if I didn't say anything or if I said something, they'd try to fight. Yeah, well... 
Let's just say we have people like that back in my homeland as well. So these types of people, they're no stranger to me. Hmm. All right. So, so yep. let's make our way over. Yep. Yes. So with that conversation on over, you guys can move your on yourselves on over to the main area. Uh, and before you is a very similar thing that you were pretty much told. Um, you see that there are two women that are praying at what looks to be a shrine and over to your rights and a group of ruffians uh, with one actually being perched on top of a statue in the center um, who looks a bit more berg like than anything um, and they're all kind of like talking among themselves and like laughing and and such and still taking a look around um. hmm and Vladimir just kind of ponders to himself a little bit, taking just a brief moment to kind of look at everything, just goes, hmm, interesting. Yeah. You can you tell that uh, per Parth is uh, scowling again, at least as much as his little mini Drake uh, face can. Yeah. You do notice, actually, that there is one m person that does actually walk towards the group, uh, and they are uh, actually, Vlad, to your surprise, a vulpine. Uh, who that has like a very intricate longbow on their back with a quiver on their hip um, and they just kind of seem to be like talking to them as in like in a command like state um, before he starts to um, before he starts actually to make his way on off in your direction um, and it's just like oh can I help you? As he just kind of stands right between you guys. Uh, we are just we are just making our way to the inn to rest up for a day. Better uh, go fast. Once again, yeah. uh, Parth kind of slips behind uh, Vlad's neck in a subtle way to just not make his collar visible. Uh, it does pass on by, and it's just like, I know that you're foreign. So, if you're going to go in quickly, you better get out quickly. Or else, these men will tear you apart. Vladimir takes a moment before... Because he, he assumes that as soon as after he says that, he was going to take off. So, Vladimir just goes, I already understand. I've already had one encounter. Thank you for wisdom. No problem. Don't let it happen again. As he starts to walk away. Um, and actually, Breaker, <laughs> you notice that still from continuing to clean, even getting to the windows, you notice that there is a, a vulpine actually by the well that is kind of taking a moment to like, have like a, like basically taking an extra bucket that's nearby and drawing some water and just basically splashing his face a little bit. And you see... Uh, they are dressed in similar red ruffian armor uh, with a very long, a big longbow on their back. Hmm. Another uh, vulpine. I did not think uh, that our species uh, uh, is very common outside of uh, the homeland. Yep. I wonder if he's uh, from back home. And then you guys go ahead, and the rest of you, you go into the inn, I assume? Yep. All right. Okay, time for some dialogue. <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> uh, let's see, let's see. Adjust the cutoff level. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay, so in the center of the town stands a large, newly built red uh, roadhouse of fieldstone and roughly hewn timbers. Um, the common room that you see before you is filled with, uh, well, s semi filled with locals nursing mugs of ale or cider. Um, most of them eyeing you with curiosity. Um, and some of you, uh, even the uh, person that is behind the counter at this very point, uh, looks at you all and it's like, oh, hello there. Welcome to the Stonewall Inn. Um, 
and the door kind of shuts behind you. It's like, how can I help you? Uh, Vladimir just kind of looks around the room a little bit just to kind of observe the patrons. Parth seems to be looking towards the uh, bard that's still playing music and seems to just like be turning his head and giving a, a, a listen to with with uh, mixed and mixed in amusement. Yeah, it's it's not the bestly like, tuned instrument you've heard, but they they play it quite well. So. But uh, yeah, Vladimir's just looking around, observing who the patrons are in here before he goes to speak up. Um, and where is uh, this any red armor? <laughs> yeah. No, it's just it looks like it's common locals, not anyone okay. in armor. Uh, then Vladimir broaches up, going, uh, "We do have a comrade that stopped in here to secure room. Has he came by?" Fellow Vulpine. Um, orange-looking fellow by the name of Vulcan? Yes. Da. He's, he's right upstairs. You have both of the rooms at the end, so. All right. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. And, um, I know that if you're looking around for any of the ruffians, just please keep a keen eye and keep your tongue on hold, okay? Will do. All right. And uh, at this point, we will. I uh, Vladimir will start making his way upstairs. All right. Uh, anyone else doing anything? Other than listening, uh, listening to the bard as uh, as Vlad uh, makes his way up the stairs, uh, Parth just uh, keeps riding along. Can I use press digitation to like to like add a teeny bit of like visual effect to the bard's playing? If you want to sit, uh, and sit there and do performance, right? Uh, like what sort of like effects though? Like sparkles and like, like puffs of smoke that, like anything like like music notes, puffs of smoke, sparkles, like little like, like he wants to do performance. Yeah, so I'll essentially help him on his performance. Okay, uh, go ahead and do a performance check for me. Have a fun. Oh, I was about to go, oh boy, but I forgot I'm a sorcerer, so I'm actually pretty good at that. Hopefully. Well, I mean, it's plus five. That, I did not even roll. That did even, not even roll. I mean, I already rolled that, because I just literally dragged in and popped down. Sure. Okay. <laughs> I got stuck. I'm just going to keep it. That is an 11. Uh, well, yep, so 11, and mm -hmm. upon that 11, uh, with the little small, like, um, like, sparks that you make and everything that go towards the tune of it, um, the bard kind of looks at you, and he's just like, well, thank you for the, the sparkles, mate, but you're kind of upstaging me here. Ah, shit, sorry, I'm so sorry. Going on, then. Sorry. <laughs> Hope I have a good performance, though. Thank you, weirdo. Um, and Damn. as you make it upstairs, you do see that there are two different nicely camped rooms. Oh, fuck him then. Uh, <laughs> he didn't want my help. You. To him. Thank you, weirdo. <laughs> well, thank you, fucking weirdo. <laughs> uh, so as you go ahead and go upstairs, uh, you do see that, there, um, that your ally, Vulcan, is oh. actually cleaning these two rooms um and they actually look like f for the anesthetic they look very rustic but they look very clean Vulcan uh Vulcan uh, what what have you been doing here well I had some time uh, to kill uh, while you know, waiting on the uh, our view so um, I decided the uh, best to uh, tidy things up well, that's a first. By the way, uh, Ace, uh, if it only takes seconds to do, can you fix my character's name so I'm not always uh, Red Pseudo Dragon? Oh, yes. It, I have to make sure I fix it for each different thing. Um, give me one moment. Yeah, it, it's a shame you can't make bookmarked to like tokens where like you can have 
predefined settings that stick. There you go. Uh, Thanks. No problem. Yeah, mm -hmm. name of it took effect. All right. Sounds good. I'm just also going to enable some light for this, so. Yes. You know that I uh, like having a tidy and well-kept uh, place uh, to uh, rest. Well, you know I just. You know I just. Uh, there. Well, I've uh, repaired uh, your uh, bedding as uh, best as now one can with the materials available. Okay, so... There. This should be f flea free. Uh, that will be that will be good. So, here's the situation. Yes, and taking on a more uh serious tone. Uh, let's see. You know what? This particular room is a little uh small. Shall we go into other rooms so we all can convene? There. Yes, uh, it is slightly bigger. All right. So at this point, we're all, I basically motioned to everyone else to just basically like, let's go into the larger room so we can actually, you know, convene. Yeah. 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 Uh, there we go. Those eyes, so... Oh, wait, no, one's slightly larger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so everyone that's uh, hopping on into this room, uh, you do notice that the funny oh. thing about it... I just went into space, one moment. Yep. <laughs> You're on I the roof. I want you to fly down, uh, game, not up through the roof that somehow only temporarily existed. Well, also, it turns out um, if you enter a building, the roof automatically comes off. The, the cut box just um, lets you see it, see past the walls. Yeah, the problem was mm -hmm. this is the uh, game, for some reason, had no problem popping me through the ceiling, but Oop. did have a... Ah, yep. did it again. Just, uh, I hit the there key in the other direction, the the opposite way that you did, and it'll pull it back in. Yeah, one sec. I'm going We're... to manually drag instead of stepping. There. Yeah, <laughs> go ahead. There you go. Dicks. Hey, welcome back from the walls. Um, <laughs> so, so you see Parth flutter over to the table and then disappear. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> Angry chirps from above, from above you, as you hear the tapping of claws as he climbs down the, down the, from the ceiling. <laughs> like a bat. <laughs> Alright, so as you kind of crowd in this small little room, uh, definitely more fit for just like people that are staying the night and everything, um, you do notice actually one thing that's really funny is that the other room, while it has less beds, has a nicer bed. Um, so. There. Oh, that's, huh, that's a bit of an interesting observation. That other room had nicer bed. Let me guess. He looks over to Vulcan. That one's yours. Well, as he, he says this as he's wearing this, like, shit-eating grin. There. Well, yes. Uh, there are, uh, one would only expect uh, someone who did uh, all the cleaning to get the nicer bed. Uh, they're yeah. also uh, giving a uh, uh, wry smile back at you. Yeah, you know, fair enough. Oh, okay. it's space. <laughs> yep. You cannot go on the beds for some reason in Tail uh, Yeah, just... you can. You have to click and drag yourself onto them. There you go. Yeah. Oh, sweet. The steppy mm -hmm. tool tries to make you step onto a valid tile, whereas the dragging tool lets you be in invalid locations. Oh, sweet. Which is what I learned the hard way. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so here's what we know so far about uh, Eknon. He is recovering. Uh, Good. So he still needs a couple days for full recovery, which tells me that we are probably going to be here for a, mo for a little bit. Hmm. Yes. We unfortunately we had one run in with these ruffians. Hey. But yes. 
it wasn't the anything. Go ahead. Uh, the innkeeper was uh, mentioning uh, they have been causing much trouble in the town, and that uh, the mayor is doing nothing about it. Ugh, go figure. That just that just makes me think of what happened back at uh, one of the other smaller towns back in Homeland. Very similar situation, though there were more aggressive tactics. Yes, and the the uh, local uh, clans and the regional government uh, did uh, actually act and uh, set things right. It seems that uh, there is no such uh, checkup in here. The only thing I could think of would be bribery, or blackmail, or threats. Something of that nature. But do please continue. So, we had one run in with these ruffians. Luckily, nothing came of it. I had to quickly dispel the situation by basically telling them not to worry about it. Although, before they parted, they did mention about an individual called the Quiver. And their leader, apparently, said to be a um, uh, quick as a fox. <laughs> Vladimir just kind of chuckles a little bit to that comment and goes, <laughs> Oh, we'll, I'll believe that when I see it. Uh, there. I wonder if we may have already seen it. There was a vulpine Wait. eye wandering around, uh, seeming rather high and mighty about himself. Wait. Vladimir suddenly just realizes for a brief moment and goes, Oh, I bet that was him. You same Vulpine with the big ass bow? The same. Yeah, he actually approached us just before we entered into the inn. Really? Basically, basically, the fellow Vulpine suggested that we. That while we are here, we do what we need to do and get out. We do not linger. Um, it sounds like he's actually trying to look out for us just because of association with, well, from what he understands, only me. Yes. Well, that does uh, not change the fact. Uh, in fact, it makes it even worse, in my opinion. Oh, don't get me wrong. It does put the hamper on things. I will not uh, uh, sit idly by uh, while someone, uh, uh, while some uh, representative of our people uh, goes around destroying the lives of others like this. Hmm. Although. Uh, it does make me curious about something, but it is something I'll have to take care of later. Yes. What might that be? Let's just call it a hunch. Very well. And uh, what did you... What else did you learn about this? And these red-cloaked individuals? Uh, well... At this point, information from us would be similar to what you have, but from intel of looking around and Parth even provided some interesting intel. Granted, it was a little bit odd to make out at first, but I was able to kind of put pieces together. They were effectively... They dealt with that... Oh, what's common word for this? Um... He he pauses for a second and then just kind of goes, eh, screw it, and then speaks in Sylvan. Uh, he goes, Skullduggery. He says that in Sylvan. Hmm. Oh, you mean not Skullduggery? And is that, that is the common, uh, is that that the common word for it? it? Yes. Ah, okay, good, good. Yes, they delve into Skullduggery. 
So they're effectively bandits from what I can understand. Uh, quite organized in group of them, it seems. More than just a simple uh, group of bandits. Uh, he almost seems one... to, uh, look, he once again wears that annoyed expression, seeming that he gets seems to be quite pee peed off about the uh, the whenever the uh, bandits get mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, sister of the, the shrine, uh, Caroline. I think uh, is how you pronounce her name. Well, she's she and the innkeeper are both are quite interested in uh, our aid. If we were to get rid of these uh, scoundrels, well, there are not only ones. The, some of the locals here have been saying the same thing. We ran into these guys. Let's just say bullying around one of the other, one of the locals, just trying to get a pail of water. Um, I want to cut this short here for just a quick moment. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just trying to get a gauge or so. As you are just going on your conversation and providing information, you hear a bit of a shatter. Um, primarily behind you, Parth, and next to you, Marshall, as an arrow whizzes right into your window, and uh, you see that it has uh, a letter attached to it. Parth whips around to look out the window that since that sailed right over him. I pick up the arrow and open the letter. Uh, so we'll start with Parth. So Parth, when you look out. Um, you don't need to do a perception check. Um, you can clearly see that um, that vulpine that you had passed by, he like lo like he literally has his bow like ready and like here like he drew it already. Yeah, so looks... he he has an empty he has an empty bow now. Yes, and he does like look up at you and gives a nice gentle bow before starting to walk away. I'll, I'll read the letter silently first, though. What the hell? Parth makes a very clear hiss. Not loud enough for the uh, full pine way down below to hear, but everyone in the room definitely hears it. Mm. Uh, Vladimir snaps his attention over to Parth after seeing the arrow whiz in, and he just he goes to peek out the window. Uh, you only really see the same thing of like that vulpine, like bows at you and then begins just mm -hmm. to walk away towards the um, uh towards the uh sleeping giant there yeah i would have uh eh, dashed over to the window as well eh, uh right behind him there looking over his shoulder you do see that through the um the metal grating around the window itself like you can see that the precise point he shot through is one of the circles um, of the metal grating. There. Okay, this... That's odd. There. Parth starts kicking the pieces of glass away from his feet. There. There. Uh, so for Marshall, um, you actually go to open up this letter, and it's in some sort of language that you don't really know is it um, sylvan uh you would not be able to know um as it it looks very intricate um like almost if it's like woven with like random bits and gestures and such um i mean i speak a good amount of languages what languages do you speak abyssal common draconic elvish orc and primordial uh is not wait hold on El Elvish is Sylvan in this uh, world, isn't it? Um, no, I believe Sylvan is its own language, indeed. Yeah, Sylvan, it's its own language. Ah, I but thought I'm trying to figure so... out the written text of it, though. Yeah, uh, Elvish and Sylvan are similar. 
I oh, believe orc and dwarvish share symbols, share characters, though. Mm -hmm. Let me just go ahead and double check. Okay. Um, and then that was my mistake. I thought uh, that uh, Sylvan was just the uh, name for the Elvish language. I mean, if you want to rule it like no. that, I don't mind. <laughs> so Elvish and Sylvan are different. Um, so there are certain languages that do share specific scripts, um, but do have like certain words that do mix around to mm -hmm. hint at being a, spe a spe specific spoken language. For you, Marshall, it this is within Elvish, but you can tell there are different words that are unfamiliar. Um, almost hinting at this is not like Elvish is not the original intention of this. I'll hand um, it to I'll hand it to Vulcan. Then I, I can't um, read this. I, I think this is Sylvan. Uh, Sylvan is the uh, Latin of Elvish. <laughs> yes, mm. essentially. Yeah. Yes. So there's root words you can pick out, like uh, like foreigner, and um, like uh, currency and such. But there's not really much you can point out. Um, yeah, giving it to yeah. Vulcan. Yeah. Vulcan, this is something. This is actually written in Sylvan. Yeah. Uh, it's and as it reads, states. You uh you treat us like foreigners, but really you're driving away our own currency being here. I recommend you go to the town hall, provide drop off all your items, and leave this town immediately. Being it today. Yeah. They suddenly uh, have changed their tone from what he told you a moment ago. Who oh, is that soul? There he is, handing the paper over. This was mm. Let me see here. Really? They're, okay. they're going that route, huh? Apparently. Hmm. There. I do not like it. Uh, well, you and I are in the same boat. So... So here's what we got. We just got a threat letter. Oh, no. Basically stating that we are, quote, we are, quote, well, how did they word it here? Driving away their economy, which really doesn't make much sense. It really does not. It really there... seems like, the, though the red clothed people are driving away the economy. Anyway. Well, I suppose, as he kind of looks over to Vulcan, I wouldn't mind making another economy crash in a small town for their own benefit. <laughs> huh? Hey there. Yes. I think uh, I, we should do something about these people. I have heard that uh, they try to accost anyone who tries to leave the town. We could use that to our advantage. Mm. And they always like to pick fights. Because they have nothing else, they have no one else to oppose them. Yes. Well, well, what do the rest of you think? Uh, I translate the uh, letter for them. Is you, uh, as Vulcan goes to say that, Vladimir stands up, and he takes a moment to help move the glass out of the way from uh, Parth's feet, and just kind of neatly piles the pieces of glass like right next to the window where the spot was broken and then goes well this kind of pushes my uh, hunch a little bit further to the forefront I will be another room there. as he goes to leave the room and migrate around to the separate bedroom oh we, we can't leave because the door's closed there hmm I 
Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Uh, Ragnar says, I am all for taking this town from its tyranny, but we're also very exhausted from the previous fights. We need a rest. Yeah, me too. There. Yes. Rest uh, now. We will deal with this uh, ruffian later. Well, didn't he say I... today? He said today, but it is uh, later today. Uh, uh, we will uh, rest for now, I think. I uh, and I go to uh, uh basically uh, cast mending on the uh glass there since all the pieces have been collected and basically put it back together. Oh, uh, I'll allow that. Yeah, you can go ahead and take a moment or so to go ahead and do that. And I'm I'm sending you a couple of uh, quick side bits here. Hey. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ace. Yeah. The... Yep. I Bar your... right there. Yeah. Bar your door and be sure that uh, you know who it is when you I uh, open it. I will uh, see what my uh, compatriot is uh, up to. Um. Okay, remind, uh, remind me, country, Faerun, right? Yes. Okay. All right, is there anything else that anyone's trying to do, or? Uh, and where did the thing go? Oh, did I close it? Nope, there it is. I imagine the guy just bars the door and pull out about extraction and tries to get some rest. <laughs> Here, Brickin, let me get you back in the building. Oh, yeah, well, thank there's you. A, there's a barricade. You can easily push the uh, cabinet against the door and such. There you are. All right. And trying to get into my room. <laughs> you both notice that the pseudo dragon follows you in. What is with this bed? Again, don't don't step the... onto it. You have to yep. slide on. You have to drag it. your character onto it. Yeah. yeah trying what if all to the here. what if the physics abuse was here, like on, me, cannon? So once you step on the bed, we just teleport to the roof and they see. <laughs> oh. It's a teleportation okay. bed. <laughs> here, there we go. Whoa. What the what the fuck are you doing? And now you fall through the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, let me let me go ahead and do it. Give me a moment. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. I I'm I did not touch anything, by he the did, way. <laughs> he did the reverse of my people are calling me. There we go. <laughs> I, I wait. I I'm. I don't see me in my in the room. Uh, oh, I see there. you. I do. Uh, your cut box is set too low. Ah, okay. I mean, cut box be it then. Thank you. Cut boxes do adjust once you enter enter building. Okay. Or at least they should. They should, long. but it's been overcompensating too often. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Then, Thank you for that yeah, little tip. So then, is everyone just going and taking like some time to rest or something like that, or? Yep. A little okay. bit, bit of time to rest here and uh, contemplate you know, with the uh, message. And so I do have to ask Ace a quick question. Sending it your way now. All right. Hmm. So as Vulcan enters the room, you s- you see Vladimir holding this holding this stone in his paw, and you catch him hearing the words uh, "Feirun," tell the Fandalin, Intel requested. And no response at all from it. You just hear Vladimir just go, oh, great. Of course they have nothing. 
as he slips this as he slips the stone back into his pocket. Better feel it. There. Your contact is not responding. No, not responding. It is potential that they have no intel on this particular vulpine. Well, that is uh, unfortunate. I mean, yeah. it's either it's either that or they're probably looking for it right now. One of the two. I'll have to keep an ear out for if they respond. Uh, understood. The leather. It said noon. I estimate we have uh, at least uh, uh, at least uh, four hours before then. Do you have Doesn't... any proposals? By the character, I don't think it's that late at night. I think it's only it's only it? around midday. There. Oh. Ah. Because you guys arrived in like at the brink of dawn, oh. but now oh, it's right. like midday. Ah, okay. Oh, okay. The environment is suggesting night at some point. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it shouldn't. It should be like midday. Well, then I'll spend okay. some time to um make that leather spellbook. So yeah. Uh, well, it depends time. on what type of like. Are you trying to like do like, um. Are you trying to do like a long rest or like a short rest? Because you guys still haven't recovered from like. <laughs> if it's a short rest, I do the spell book. But if it's a long rest, I'd rather just sleep. <laughs> yeah, I need a long rest to get back my slots. Yep. Same here. I'd yeah. say a uh, long rest here. Okay, then so we we'll go ahead up, up and after this rest. So what we can do, and Marshall, is that um. Since there is like time that you can have that's like not really occupied or so, um, you can go ahead and do a simple downtime of setting up your spellbook. Um, in It'll addition empty, to getting a short rest, okay, in addition to getting a long rest, you can take that rest to craft it though, because you have a leather's men's kit. A leather men's kit. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm not proficient. It should help. Yeah. You can always take a 10. Yep. Well, I was hoping that we... I was hoping that I'd be able to get more intel on this particular individual. Just so that we know what we're... Just so that I know what we're up against. Yes. It may take... It may take some time. To be quite Whatever. honest with you... I do not want to be. I do not want to give into their demands. I don't know how the two elves feel, though. Uh, yes, I will not um, sit idly by my hand, my countrymen. I, I well, my countrymen uh, abuse uh, these people. They'll get what's coming to them. Whether it's by our hand. Or by someone else's. Hmm. Although it does make me concerned, though. Yes. Yes, indeed. Okay, so just to confirm, you guys are doing a long rest? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep, and there's a mini Drake-sized lump on the foot of his bed. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. So from that, then I will go ahead and say that you are going to be, um, you will be waking up near around, um, the beginning of the, like middle of the night. Um, but honestly, um, yeah, you should, that should be the case at least. Mm -hmm. And from there, you guys fully replenish your stuff and now you've gotten your level up in. So, which would be level three. So your, your stuff is already level three. So. If you mm -hmm. haven't already done that, make sure it's updated. Mm -hmm. Are we going to have any, like, like, like private character stuff that happens to, like, explain why we're level 3, or is it just, to see, or is it just we're already uh, Well, let me go ahead and finish. Sorry. So, when it comes down to resting for the night, um, 
a bit of a chill wind does kick on in um as you are as it kind of like seems to be clattering a bit against the glass and you do feel as if like your time spent here is one that is of urgency but also of um a bit of it just doesn't really feel like you've gotten the chance to truly relax a bit and so you are kind of a bit more on edge more than anything as as day turns the night um and you kind of awaken to what seems to be i'm trying to get a good ambiance for this uh i don't want to just be t total pitch black I want to get some exposure in. There we go. Much better. As I said, oddly for me, uh, my display is still. Oh, there we go. Now it updated. There we go. Probably. Yep, I just had to update it. Um, it was uh, it was like twilight earlier, but now it's night. Mm. Yep. And as you actually awaken near the middle of the night, you do hear that there are, there's a lot of commotion, going on downstairs, um, as if like someone's partying um and it's kind of getting harder to like continue sleeping but you do feel at least replenished from like your um from your uh, tr uh from your night and everything mm. like, you can just hear bits and chanter of like oh <laughs> like um like very much liveliness and everything but also to the point of it being like rowdy you know boisterous very much yeah so let me go ahead and uh just... and you can actually even like identify that that's a similar thing even outside um that like it seems like that some public drinking has actually occurred like a cacophony exactly and i'm gonna go ahead and uh change the music to better fit this so, my music. to answer Marshall's question, what did happen when Garth level up? Did, did it uh, not technically take place? It was just a rest? No, so you, you're still level 3. So you're, um... Or so it's just, mean? now anything that you would have gotten, now you're at level 3. Oh, so well, we I, are at level 3 now. Okay. My yes. question is more or less, like, are you, like, are you, are you doing, are you gonna do that thing where it's like, oh, like, this thing happens while you sleep, or you see something, and then suddenly you're level three, or is it just, is it just hand wave? I mean, that's, it was like just the descriptions of, like, what I was just talking about, of, like, oh, like oh, uneasiness sorry. and such. Oh, sorry, mm. yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Sometimes case... level ups don't come with, uh, major changes. Yep. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, at least, like, from, like, your rest, like, even though, like, there is, like, bits and pieces of, like, nervousness and, like, tensions arising a little bit, you do feel more resilient after it all. Hmm. Therefore, giving you the level up. Oh, sweet. Uh, in that case, um, I... one sec, uh, I'm gonna have to do this, I think, is just to make things work lore-wise. One sec. Uh, real quick, Ace, I forgot to ask you a question before we went to sleep, but I... Okay. 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 Alright, anything else before um, you awaken yourselves, or...? Just double-checking, HP is restored, right? Yep, so HP, spell slots, everything like that is restored. Let me get up from knockdown and let me take the longest on beyond. There we go. Oh, what is that racket? Oh. Hmm. Yes, it sounds like someone's having a very good time downstairs. Well, at least there's that. Hmm. But, well, I mean, at least we got the rest in, so... There he is. 
there. Let's see what is uh, going on. Okay, uh, so uh, you three in the, in your room, you're gonna investigate. The well, hold on. Okay. Now, hold on, Vulcan. Hmm. Considering what has happened thus far, we need to be careful with this. We need to keep yes. our heads down. If yeah. anything, what we could do because of the way that stairwell is built, we can literally just poke our heads down and look down from ceiling. There, you read my mind. Oh, good. So we're on, we're both on the same page. Indeed. Uh, Vladimir stands up and goes to stretch. <sighs> um. Oh. I was so busy focusing on one other thing that I didn't think of the other thing. <laughs> um, uh, Vlad and Vulcan both roll a d20. Okay. Highest wins. Oh, oh Jesus, you just you just sent my <laughs> die flying out. Hold on, roll it outside of the... If you're going to roll it uh, and you're in a building, just roll it outside the building. Yeah, okay. it's a bit weird without, with inside a yeah. building. Yeah. It, it's, well, it's spawned and it landed, but yeah, there you go. So, yeah. Uh, I had 13. Vul uh, Vulcan had 12. Mm -hmm. uh, in that case, uh, there is some... I was so busy with another thing I had to... My character had to do that I forgot about the other thing that my character had to do. Hmm. So... Uh, in the morning, when you two wake, uh, Parth, uh, is acting a little strange. He seems mm. to pace in a little circle on the floor, and keeps making strange little sounds in it with his little voice that sound very animal, and it almost sounds musical to your ears, to... Vulcan, it just sounds like cute little noises, but Eros, it sounds more and more and more in, uh, enchanting until you feel a light pressure on, on your mind that of, uh, of, a, of a givingness that's trying to reach out to you. Uh, and you can feel that there's something trying to uh, touch your soul from, from the pseudo-dragon. steal uh, your soul <laughs> if you want you can if you want to do a knowledge arcana you can uh, also a knowledge history will work i think right uh ace oh uh, that's correct uh let's see hold on i think even knowledge nature will work uh it would it's primarily if it's something art of magic wise it's arcana arcana then yeah arcana well, or history i either way they're both the same they're both the same score so Either way, oh. it's 19. Oh, he easily got it, right? <laughs> yeah, he got it. Uh, you can fi you figure out that Parth is performing the ritual of of the familiar. Oh. So, okay. Uh, Vladimir pauses for a second, at first looking very confused as to what's going on. And then realizes what's going on from some of the from some of the readings he's done. And he just kind of he sits on his bed and he relaxes. And he just he ponders to himself a bit going, let me see if I can do this right. Uh I think it's this. As he slowly extends his paw out in acceptance. He can towards Parth. You see, uh, briefly, your your aura and Parth's aura reach out. There's a brief touch, and then all of a sudden, you get you can feel that yourself gain a a magical effect over your body. You can tell that you uh, are now in tuned with magic in a way you haven't felt before. In other words, you now have magical resistance, and you also suddenly feel your senses reach out way farther than they ever should as you realize that you can see from Parth's perspective whenever you close your eyes. Uh, oh. Whoa. Oof. There. 
uh, you, you see, you, you see Vladimir, Vladimir just kind of like, he kind of has this couple of throwbacks a little bit where it's like, whoa, okay, whoa, whoa, okay, this is new, whoa. <laughs> there. Uh, would I also recognize what is going on? Uh, or have a chance to? You know, Arcana check, yeah. Six plus, uh, oh, one, so seven. More than likely not, as it just kind of looks like they're doing a really weird, like they're in some sort of like trance oh. together. Or, uh, if it was history wise, uh, there'd be nine, but eh. that's my primarily arcana, it's not really anything historically, mm -hmm. anything that would be discovered. Good grief, I must burned all my yeah, good rolls earlier. <laughs> Oof. There are more to come. Uh, don't so, forget the one, don't forget the one die there, uh, breaker that you've got in the building. Thank you. I'll just clear the board. Yeah. There we go. So, okay. Is there anything else that anyone wants to do in preparation before you investigate the sounds? I don't mm. think I have anything I can prepare. Other than I'm guessing uh, Vlad will tell Vulcan what's going on. Well... Vladimir doesn't know what's going on outside of himself right now because he's kind of in the throwbacks of whoa, okay, hold on, whoa, this is new, okay. And it's a little so weirder he... too, considering that Parth's standing on the floor, so you can easily see under the beds <laughs> through Parth's perspective. Yeah. So every time he closes his eyes, he sees under the bed, and it freaks him out. He opens his eyes again, and it's just like. This ain't this ain't another vision, is it? Oh, okay. Uh, wait. It so Vulcan sees Vladimir. What seems like he's re he's adjusting to something, almost as if like you know how when you turn on a really bright light from a really dark room and you blink a few times mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. keep the strain from your pupils. That's what he's doing. He's blinking. Yeah. It's like a bit more uh, than normal. It's like mm. when a teacher uh, is like done playing a movie, in the <laughs> turn lights on. and then they turn the lights on quickly without letting you know. So you're like flashbanged mm. a little bit. Yeah. Uh, oh. Vulcan, or uh, Vladimir, uh, are you all right? Oh, uh, okay. Well, that just happened. <clears throat> Meanwhile, Parth is uh, sitting on the floor, surprisingly calmly. It looks like this isn't something new to him. And he just sits there waiting for uh, for Vladimir to adjust. Hmm. Okay. Well. I've given you the gay. <laughs> <laughs> well. I think I just got... Okay, there we go. I think Parth just did a bonding, did a bonding ritual of familiar. There. Mm. There's a very affirmative little trip sound from Parth as he just sits there, uh, rather casually, though his tail flicks back and forth, with, uh, looking uh, uh, proud of himself. Well, now. It Anthony. seems I have gained familiar. Uh, well, well, uh, hey, you are a lucky uh, uh, fox. Parth uh, yes. uh, begins to uh, turn around after the door has been opened and casually uh, starts walking across the floor. I am going to perform a hide check, though, to be quiet about it. Uh, why is hide... Hiding from me. Uh, sneak, stealth. sneak. Uh, stealth, plus yes. four. Sorry. Spinny, spinny. Noise. So that's 16, 17, 18, 19. That's a dirty 20. There. And Parth mm -hmm. just casually walks over and does the most powerful thing a mini Drake has, which is he sticks his head just right down <laughs> without having to <laughs> feel any of his body. Okay, so you're sneaking 
and then you're trying to perceive what the noise is without making any noise. Yeah, and I'm just so, poking my head down, so it's just my head that's peeking over the uh, the edge of the uh, frame. Uh, Vladimir kind of peeks his head around the corner and notices what Parth's doing. He holds up a paw to Vulcan and goes, Wait, I think I know what he's doing. Let mm. me try something. And closes my eye, and Vladimir closes his eyes to look through Parth's perspective. Yep, and although wobbly for just a moment, your vision clears and you can see directly from the perspective of Parth as if it were your own body. The only difference is, is Parth is entirely in control of where he looks, but you seem to be able to nudge him to ask him where to look. Hmm. So, with the, tel with the telepathic connection, he gives the notion of slowly look around the room. Okay. Let's check in. You have any input there, Ace, first? Uh, so, what was your perception check? I, I will need I, to ro roll one. That was my high yes. first, so perception. Yeah, so your stealth is fine. I just want to know what your perception was. I'm, I'm dealing with something extra in addition. Not the mm. greatest, but it is six, seven, eight, nine. It's a nine. Okay, so as you go ahead and try and reach like down a little bit, you're kind of in an awkward position where like your head doesn't fully get around from your natural position uh, due to the stone of the foundation of this floor. So you kind of have to use your hind legs a little bit to stretch a bit more, but you're in a very awkward position. Um, but you can keep yourself at least still a little bit where you can just put your chin and look around. Um, if need be, uh, Parth could also walk around and lay down on the top step. Yeah, if it, that could also be it. It's just from your initial position, but you are able to uh, gauge that downstairs you do see a group of ruffians um, partying and like uh, basically like um, singing along to the the more furious playing of music from the bard earlier, um, and you can tell that that like the bard is in a little bit of anxiety. Uh, as he's playing the music, trying to do his best. Um, as the ruffians are, like, cheering and, like, um, being like, another or another, and basically just demanding food and drinks constantly. Uh, as the barkeep is just, uh, aka the innkeeper, is just very much, like, trying to get the stuff out as fast as possible. You can mm. feel directly from the emotional link that Parth is getting really peed off about these uh, ruffians at this point. There's a there's a sense of loathing and hatred towards them at this point. You begin to get a feeling, this isn't the first time Parth has seen these ruffians, and there's a growing hatred constantly from them. So at yeah. this point, at this point, Vladimir just kind of again, with the, tel with the telepathy, he just kind of reaches out, basically saying okay, that's enough. Come on back. Parth uh, quietly uh, turns around, oops, wrong button, quietly turns around and uh, paces back over to the door. And Vladimir just opens his eyes a bit. Oh, that's something I'm going to have to get used to. Oh, okay. <clears throat> let's, let's, let's go over to the other room, meet up with others. And I can explain what's going on downstairs. Hmm. All right. So, so are you conveying this with the other two as well, or? Well, yes. I just, I yeah. Basically, what I said was, let's go into the other, let's go into the other room where uh, Marshall and Norlor are and brief them on what's going on so that we can devise a plan. And just uh, checking for uh, Eros's uh, behalf, uh, does he have his backpack with him? Yes. Sorry, okay, cool. Because right, uh, then... Parth has an extra... Parth is being keenly uh, observant about the backpack because he's paranoid about it. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. No, and Vladimir then... made sure that he grabbed the backpack first. All right. And then just to make sure, um, Marshall and uh, Norlora, since you're hearing this noise and it's waking you up too, is there anything that you're trying to do? Uh, Not that I can think of. Okay. So you're just kind of sitting there, just letting the music play? Yeah. Uh, Nor? She's wondering what, why there's so much drunken revelry, but I also forgot to ask, could I, since it was a long rest, could I swap out a couple of my spells? Yeah, if you want to right now, you can feel free and do it. Just make sure that you update on your character sheet. Alright, I'll do that. Okay. So, Vladimir looks back to Vulcan and just puts a digit up to his muzzle, like, shh. Like, be quiet type of thing. Well, well, at least we don't need to be running around. The music's playing loud enough where it'll drown most of our noise. Just be careful. Okay, so you're gonna you guys are gonna try and go into the other room carefully? Yeah, well, just not yep. not like actively sneaking because the the music seems to be playing loud enough, but not like you know, casually walking where it's ka clunk, ka clunk, ka clunk, but just kind of Don't forget they have their door barricaded, so you need to uh Oh yeah, that's right. Chance. They do have their door barricaded. Oh yeah, my yep. apology. Yep. Okay. Yep. Here, and uh I joined them. Uh, I have a really conference. funny way of getting their getting their attention. Uh, <laughs> uh oh. Parth just walks over to the door and sticks his tail under it. Mm. Yeah, do they notice that? Nor Marshall, a yeah. little red lizard tail sticks out on, it sticks under the mm. door. <laughs> Uh, I open the door. Well, well we have to unbar it, and we can open it. Well, can I look through the keyhole first? If there's a keyhole. Uh, yeah, there is a keyhole. Uh, I need to make a perception check if you're doing that. Yeah, I'll make a perception check. Uh, let me pull up roll 20. I mean, mm -hmm. beyond. Perception, not that good, but may as well. Seven. Anything else added, or just zero? It's just seven. Just seven. Okay. So as you kind of look through the keyhole, um, it, while it's a bit dark, um, uh, with there not being too much light, you do know you can tell that there is similar clothing to at least one of your allies. I just back away from the door a bit more. Yeah. Bye. Seeing that, yeah, seeing that uh, they aren't uh, responding to that, I, I uh, point at uh, the door and if uh, Vladimir was uh, looking at uh, my direction, he would see my uh, lips moving and then in uh, Marshall's uh, head, he hears, it's okay, it's us, open up. Wait, that's message you're doing? Yes. I think you have to see the target. Hold on. I try. do not. There. Uh, as long as I am familiar with the, the target and know it's beyond the barrier, uh, it can go through up to one foot of stone, one inch of common metal, a uh, thin sheet of lead, or three foot, uh, three feet of uh, wood blocks. Okay, then I open the door. Oh, yep, you're right. Okay, I just wanted to go ahead and double check. Sure. I open the door then. Okay. The door doth open. Come on, let me pick up my piece, damn it. There we go. Okay, so you guys get yourself situated into the room and then what? Um, and one, once part of the and I'll close the door and barricade it again. Here we go. 
go. There's a little chirp sound from Parth very softly as he walks in. He also checks out the uh, table, which uh, he's, he did see uh, Vulcan repair the glass earlier, but even still, he double checks before hopping up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then anything else you're doing? or? There. Uh, Marshall said he was closing the door and rebarricating it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any particular manner of closing the door or just kind of straight up closing it like normal? Like, do you do it quietly? Yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it quietly. Okay. I need you to make a stealth check for me to make sure that you don't make oh, wait. Much noise with it. Um, wait, what, what would be causing the noise? The creaking of the door. And also if you're closing it like too much, then if it's slamming or whatnot. Oh. So it'd be like the hinges that are like rusty or something. Yeah, but if you do it, if you do it like slow enough, may and I press to digitate the hinges so they don't squeak to clean them? I, I don't know if they were squeaky or not. It's just if you close the door softly. Okay. Yeah, it's just if you just close the door so, like softly enough, then you can make sure you're not making too much noise. Ugh, my stealth is crap. Ugh. Someone yeah. else close the door. Or am I stuck should, closing it? It would probably be uh, worth sleight of hand for that I think about. Uh, do the I same could, thing. Uh, I well was. It, Vladimir just carefully, with a stealth check of twenty three, carefully closes the door without making any sound. Like I try to close hey, it, but then I, I like, like I, I, you make sound yeah. or not. You, you cl I try to close it, then I freak out and I just like step back for it. And then listen, you, you listen here, buddy. You you listen to me. I'm the dungeon master. I, it determines whether or not you make a noise or not, even with that 19. Okay, so you close the door quietly. <laughs> <laughs> that's the DM. That's Ace. Ace says the DM's version. Going, listen here, you little shit. <laughs> yeah, listen here, buddy. I. I am the one who determines. <laughs> you are okay. not the one who decides what the what the dice are. I'm the one who decides. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Um, so mm -hmm. Vladimir sets himself down on the bed, and he goes, "Well." There's a bit of a ruffian party going on downstairs. From what, uh, from what Parth has seen, mm -hmm. I think he looks over to Parth and he goes, "Well, how many did you see? Three? Uh, I Ace, so you have to actually tell me what I saw because it. You, you told me I saw the bard playing like crazy, but I don't know how many ruffians oh. was down there. Oh, yeah. So in total, you saw about... I, mean, I was just revealing it to show you that there are, I think, about... Four I didn't ruffians. even think of trying to use the cut box. Just look down there. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, so there, there are about four ruffians that are out there. Oh, including our uh, fiend friend. Uh, no. What are they called again? The tiefling? Tiefling, yeah. No, so the, the tiefling was actually not down there. You saw it about two different brutes one of the more hooded ones that uh you were noticing and then you also did notice that there is a uh, a dragonborn like one uh still uh, wearing similar ruffian armor so dragonborn and two grunt humans and somebody wearing a hood yes that is correct Uh, Vladimir, pa uh, Vladimir just kind of pauses for a second, going, uh, "There was, I believe, there was four down there. Poor Bart has been playing like mad. I'm sure you can hear it." Mm -hmm. mm. Just for the sake of current security? Yes. I would almost say we lay low up here for a little while. Hmm. Up until they're up until they've gone. 
there, possibly. My suspicion is that uh, they are here having a good time, but didn't have uh, uh, orders uh, to come to us when uh, uh, the time is uh, right. Remember the letter? Hmm. Yes, I remember the letter. I would not put it past the man to have such uh, orders, uh, given how you know, with, it seems well run and coherent this group is. Hmm. You see Vladimir just kind of staring at the door for a brief moment. Parth is also kind of looking at the door, scowling a little bit because he's uh, uncertain himself. It seems that even the pseudo dragon has a difficulty deciding between preservation and conflict. Given everything we have for intel, I'm sure that if a conflict were to happen this evening, we may not be quite fully suited. Though I have been surprised once before. So, who knows. Parth also lifts his head and uh, looks over to Vlad and an image of uh, Aknor uh, laying on the uh, table. Uh, Having been stitched up, uh, flashes across his mind as uh, like, something that's been running through Parth's mind. Is it Aknor? Aknor, yeah. Aknon. Aknon. Sorry. <laughs> okay. And we also have we also have uh, we also have our other compatriot to worry about as well. Hmm. I don't... Uh, I get this feeling that I shouldn't say his name out loud here. I don't know why. Parth uh, glances over to Vlad and then glances down, down at the floor for a moment, seeming to make an indication of the people downstairs, and puts his paw to his collar, covering up his, uh, his guild insignia. Right. To keep ourselves anonymous. Hmm. So what do you so what do you guys think? I've already given you what my thoughts on this whole thing are. I see we lay low here. Well I think uh, I think we've already might have I think we've already might have ran risk of actually moving around, so we may end up having to stay in here. Mm. Well, we can uh, stay here for now and just uh, see what happens. Wait it out, yeah. door. It doesn't seem like moving is a good idea right now. Could I have a character carefully listen to the door? Uh, yeah, if you want to. Uh, so go ahead and put yourself right in front of the door. Um, and if you want to go ahead and do perception check, um, go ahead and make it. Meanwhile, I'll have Parth look out the window. Okay, so Parth, you really don't see anything outside the window as, I mean, it's, it's middle of the night. Um, like, most people have really kind of gone to bed, um, even though you still kind of see some fixtures of light still kind of still flickering and everything. Um, and um, Norlor, what was your roll, um, your result? She rolled a 14, and she also has a plus 6, so a dirty 20. Dirty 20, okay. Even, like, it, you're able to kind of, like, put your ear to the door... And you're like really listening hard. Um, and you don't really get anything until it hits you. Which, not figuratively, like literally. Like, 
uh, within a matter of moments, the door kicks open. Um, and within a they lush... They through the barricaded door? Just checking. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. It was a nat 20. <laughs> oh. oh. Yeah. Uh, so, and revealed, um, which actually I need to go ahead and initiate damage to Nalor, which also Nalor, I need you to make a strength check. Since you were, your face was right next to the door, I need to, we just need to make sure that you're still standing. Hmm. Oh, nice. Nice. Oh, she Ooh, counted the 20 yeah. with another 20. <laughs> <laughs> so even if, like, you felt the impact of the uh, of this door busting down hit you, uh, you are able to still stand, though your face does hurt a lot. Uh, as you take a total of seven bludgeoning damage... Um, oh even with that nat 20 there, couldn't absorb the, that hit. The nat 20 was just to make sure that you weren't prone from being hit over. Mm. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, uh, man, no, no bonuses. It was a surprise Dang. attack, so... It was a surprise attack, yeah. Uh, yeah. As you see um, a, Draco uh, a dragonborn uh, with a big, great axe, uh, Lily kicks down the door in front of you, and he's like... Oh, yeah. Again? We've got some party guests. Um, as you all are surprised. Uh, real quick, Ace. I just realized that my second half of my token is not in the listing for morphs. Huh. Oh, do you have to chain it? Do you have to link it? It's um, they, they are already linked. Uh, all of our tokens got reset. My health and everything was reset too. Yeah, mm. if, if it's on a new board, it usually gets reset, unfortunately, so you may have to go ahead and um, set that back up. Uh, I remember setting it up once before. I'm trying to remember yeah, how to do it. This one? Yeah, this one's a little bit mm. odd. Um, I don't uh, go ahead and try morphs. poking around as uh, Ace sets up initiative order. Let's see if there's a way I can help link it. I, I, I don't really know how to do it myself, so... Yeah, I, I would help, but I have no clue. <laughs> Oh, wait, wait, I got an idea. I got an idea. Well, so Ace, I sent a message in, our, in my little chat. Okay, give me one sec. Got it. Oh, you got it? Sweet. Yep, so you, you, you load up your um, your model figure stuff, and then when you have the morph menu up, you just drag it in. Uh, and then also you send a message to me. Mm hmm Okay. Okay. Yep. No worries, Marshall. Um, yep. Go ahead and just uh, we'll get the initiative going right now, and then we'll be good to go. All right. So yeah, let hey. me just go ahead and get this going. So I will say that since this door was kicked down, um, it is going to be a surprise round. So. Also, um, Eros, no need, because there's already integration oh. for this. Oh, okay. Oh, you already have an initiative somehow? Uh, it's, remember, it's, I already have it integrated in, the, in um, Tailspire. Oh, so you already have it do rolls for us, and it does our dex bonuses already? Exactly, yes. Oh, cool, okay, that's even better. Thank you. Mm -hmm. No problem. Uh, and I'm just trying to remember, it's, so there's one, there's one up there, there's one down down there, one, two, three the last one okay there we go so we'll go through the turn order and then since it's a surprise round you guys get skipped so so we have to pass our turns uh starting with you ren yes yeah, start uh and then uh vulcan gets passed marshall gets passed park gets passed Vladimir gets passed, and now it's up to the dragon uh, born right in front, uh, which let me go ahead and uh, change up the music to uh, do some cool stuff with it. Um, yeah, this be... That's way too metal. This is not what I'm looking for. <laughs> <laughs> the music didn't even change for me yet. 
I, I have to apply it just yeah I'm trying to figure out oh. a song. <laughs> okay. Here we go. I keep thinking of him accidentally setting something like Fighting of the Spirit from Tales of Fantasia where it's like this epic <laughs> struggle song. <laughs> okay. So within a matter of moments, um Norlor, you see this dragon uh, born with his great axe start to swing down upon you. Uh, what is your AC? Uh, I don't have a shield up, right? No, you've been surprised. Yeah, you've Sorry. been surprised. Uh, sadly, so. that hits. My AC without the shield is 15. 15? Okay. So with a great axe having two hands... Uh, oh no, actually no, Great Axe is really just a d12, so, oof. Yikes. Uh, despite uh, being a surprise, I can still affect this because this is an instant reaction. Silvery Barbs. Okay, uh, who are you giving advantage to? I'm giving it to myself. Unfortunately, he gets to keep his uh, worst roll, which is still the 18, so he still makes a swing, though. Oh, man, that's still that's still so... Like, that one's scary. Yeah. Anyway, it has to use the new roll, though, for Silvery Barbs. No, you, ha you have to roll twice and take the worst. Basically, I'm, I'm ba making you redo with disadvantage, effectively. I'm turning your normal no, roll no, into a disadvantage that's... roll. You it, you're using... Yeah, so you magically distract the tr the triggering creature and turn it momentarily. The triggering creature must re-roll and use the lower... Okay, yeah, so use the lower result. Yep, yeah, so it still hits yeah. anyway, so... Yeah, uh, that's... Okay. I thought so, because I was like, that's the reason for Silvery Barbs, is to give him disadvantage. Got mm. it. Okay, cool. So, even with that, the Dragonborn still does get a hit, and it is a d12 plus 4. Uh, let me get that dice upset. My apology. And ooh. Okay, so Nolor, you are taking thirteen slashing Ouch. damage as this axe embeds into your shoulder. Ow! Oh! It's like you that's didn't, what you didn't pay the toll, so we're taking it by force. Uh, and he Are these guys being inebriated because they were drinking down there? Um, so this one does not actually look inebriated in any sort of way. Um, at least from what you can generally tell. Darn. You also wouldn't know their exact intoxication level, or even if they were drinking in the first place. Well, so, if they'd just be stumbling around or not. Yeah, th this one does not look to be at least, um, as he goes for a secondary attack. Uh, that is a 18 to hit. Jeez. Seriously? Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> That's a 15 uh, damage. Oh, she got downed already? Oof. Yeah. Well, your lot seems to be weak anyway. Finish him off, Groot. As he moves aside. Uh, which is actually this uh, Crusher's turn. Mm. He's like, All oh, right, they can friendly uh, friendlies can push past each other, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, friendlies can. That's correct. Uh, oh wait, and he actually can't really move in because there's someone. In the, there's a corpse. Uh, well, technically, there's Nalor in the way. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So there's a, there's a, even falling, you still occupy space until you're dead, if I recall right. Right. That is correct. Uh, so he <laughs> wouldn't be able to actually move more inwards. Um, oh, but he does have a dagger he can throw. So let's see who will who he'll throw it at. I'm back, by the way. Sounds good. Uh, Nalor just got downed. Uh, she got so... hit hard. Yeah. So I see that. You... Hmm? 
I see that. I'm sorry, you're you're not being picked up at all. I see that. Oh, you see that? Got it. Okay. Um, well, this crusher does go ahead and pulls out a dagger and starts to chuck it, and let's see who he hits. If it will let me load the D6, okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, okay, so uh, Marshall, it is actually uh, you that's going to be hit with an uh, as he's standing basically like in the doorway as he okay. tosses a dagger in your direction. I would like to cast a shield. Well, you don't know the roll yet. He may miss. Oh, that's true. Okay, yep. the dagger misses. Sweet. Um, as then you see him basically just uh, put this morning star back in his hands and ready for co um, ready for combat. Marshall, you got a free dagger behind you. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, that's true. I'm not proficient in them. I mean, I'm proficient, but I'm not good at them. A free dagger in the wall. Uh, and then pretty much next up, it is back to co back to Nalor's turn. Uh, I need you to make a death saving throw. Oh no! Roll high. Roll with twenty, please. Oh, that's one failure. No, no. Yeah. All right, and then it's the next turn. All um, right. Which since, is Vulcan. Since it's not my turn, I'm gonna quickly fill my water up real quick since I forgot to do that. There, my all right. Break. Let's see here. Then in that case, uh. Uh, I'm going to uh, then cast uh, Hex on uh, this guy here. And Oh, uh, this guy right here? Yep, that guy right there. Cool. And uh, then that? Mm -hmm. um, for stats uh, there, uh, he is going to... Uh, uh, He's going to suffer from uh, I think he's going to suffer from a dexterity. Okay. Uh, there. All right. I assume the uh, Eldritch Blast follows. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, go uh, ahead. Which ahead. version of follows. Eldritch Blast are you using? Oh, uh, what? Which version of Eldritch Blast do you have? Uh, there. Three or. or two or three versions uh i have one version there one that uh let me roll here real quick i'm back well is, are you using the pushy one or the non-pushy one uh i can layer them yes i'm trying to ask what invocations you're including in it mm. yeah there yeah i the, i can kind of yeah well that'll be determined after but yes. so mm -hmm. So I was total? going in sequence there, first determining if I hit the guy. Uh, there, oh, okay. So. I've always been told you have to announce it first before you roll. That's why I was trying to interrupt you to ask. No. Well, that. Uh, so these are upon hit. So mm -hmm. these ones are determined after if it actually hits or not. Yep. Okay. That's why I wasn't bothering it, saying exactly what. And there, I wanted to figure out, you know, was it worth expending those words to say <laughs> uh, what they were doing if they didn't hit? So uh, 11 plus 7. Okay, that will hit. Go All ahead, right. Damage. Okay, so then uh, that is uh, 1d10 uh, plus 5 from my uh, plus 5 from my agonizing blast side of things. Mm -hmm. And then uh, from the hex there, that is an additional uh, 1d6. There, so taking these two and rolling 10 damage and he does get pushed to, to stumble down the stairs okay I will have him do a strength check just to make sure that he doesn't actually like fall down um, mm -hmm. but he will get uh, pushed we're going down they're probably gonna uh, yes, how far I'll does it back. push is it 5 feet or 10 feet 10 feet I'll be back oh it's 10 feet okay. let's see uh, what is your spell save, DC Breaker? He just said he'll be right back. Uh, Oof. what's well, eight 
plus proficiency plus Which dex. Oh, charisma, so it's 15. So actually, he fails. So, uh, therefore, he will basically be prone halfway down the stairs. Oh. I'm tumbling down. <laughs> <laughs> As he hits the wall and then, oof. Mm. That was 15. You just, you just hear the Minecraft sound of, ooh. Ooh. <laughs> ooh. <laughs> ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Did he just there get gnomed? Gnome down here. Did he just get gnomed with that, ooh? Ooh. <laughs> awesome. That is why I never, ever will play a gnome in d d in my entire life. Because, you know, people are going to make you just got gnomes jokes. Uh, it's just like, I, I don't like gnomes. Like, that's an extra step for it. It'd just be like, I don't want to talk like this. We're like, I'm not a good goblin. Even though it'd be really funny. You can just talk just, like a normal guy. Bilbo just talks like a normal guy. I, that's the, I don't want to talk about a, like a little guy, though. And especially like in a race that's like... Yeah, I mean, like, uh, little old. guy, non-derogatory. But it's funny, I like this. I'm not a gnoblin. I'm not a gnork. I'm a gnome. And you've been gnomed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just don't find it as like an exciting race. Like, well, that's sadly. Like, it's cool for like artificers, but it's like... I feel like that when, when a race is like specifically designed flavor-wise to be around one specific class... Like high elves and wizards, or tiefling yeah. and, and warlock. Yeah, it's, or well, those and are bard. like well, those are like subclasses though. I mean, like the core race, you know. I said tiefling like, and bard, or tiefling and warlock. Well, those are like well, you can still play like other classes with them, but it's like with gnomes, like their key abilities are around like tinkering and sorts. So oh, primarily, it's like cool. artificer. Oh, it's like half orc and um, half orc and uh, barbarian. Well, also oh. half orcs can be fighters, paladins, and really any oh. martial class. Okay, blast. so okay, so like Furbolg is made specifically to be a druid. Yeah, we have so but... many so they, because they synergize so much with it, not any other class. Exactly. Um, okay, and I just don't know if Breaker is gonna move, so. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I have a feeling that, uh, hmm. Yeah, I don't know where. Okay. Well, if that's the case, then I'm just going to go ahead and pass because that was his action and bonus action. So, Marshall, you're up. Ooh, I don't know if there's anything I can do to help Norlor. <laughs> I don't, I'm not proficient in medicine. Do I even risk going outside? That's the question. I wouldn't suggest it because at the moment we have a choke. Hmm. They're I have no, an oh. idea. If we somehow manage to like jump onto this roof next to us, ooh, no, we can't. The window doesn't open anyway. We could jump through, but I was gonna say if we can manage to do that, I can misty step there. The window has metal grating on it. Oh, okay. Like you guys hmm. would have to spend a few turns just kicking the window out. I don't. The only damaging spell spell I have is when I have to vis visibly see them. Or somebody could have dragged me out of the doorway. <laughs> Someone could. That would probably yeah. be an action, though. An action that would probably help. No, uh. That's true. Norlor. I'll. I'll use an action to move Norlor onto the bed. Okay, so Nalora will be dragged upon to the bed. Yep. And I'll just stand where Norlor was down. I'll peek my head out. Um, quicken spell. Um, quicken spell Ray of Frost. And then go back in. Okay, uh, and it's Ray of Frost on the Draconian? Or... Yeah, let me spin around too. Alright, uh, go ahead and attempt to hit. 
Okay, it's a plus seven by default. So let's see if this hits. I'm assuming a 24. Nice. Hits. That's pretty close. Yeah, you hit. Okay, so it's 1d8 cold. So let's hope for high. And their speed is reduced by 10 feet. Yep. It's a four. So four cold damage. Okay. I'm going to change their color to reflect the um, the frost. And I'll walk back inside. I don't think that will... I think that was, like, perfectly, like, 30 feet movement as a whole. That's that's definitely... Like, that's not even within, like, 15, so you're good. Or, like, it's yeah. at least, like, 15, 20, so... You're good. Uh, is that it? Yeah, that's all I can do. All right. Uh, Parth, here you go. Parth uh, makes a quick uh, flutter jump and lands on Noor. And then casts Cure Wounds on her uh, using a second level slot. Woo! So I think that, that lets me double it, right? No, it's 2d8, and then you add your Wisdom. Okay, so, oh, I see, yeah, increase it by 1d8. So 2d8 plus Wisdom. Yep. Well, 2d8 plus your uh, spellcasting modifier. Oh, yeah, it's my primary. Okay, so 2d8 plus 3 then. My apologies. <laughs> Come on, spin the dice. These dice only want to move at super slow speed here. Whatever, right, I'll there. throw them. So, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine HP. All right, uh, Nor, you are up with one uh, failure to your count, and then. Uh, and you are up. <laughs> then uh, Parth uses the last uh, bit of his movement to put himself into this corner. Lovely. So action, move. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, let me uh, just check. And that's it. Uh, let me turn my character around. How do held uh, actions work uh, for initiative in this system because I can't so, cast hex until I see it, a foe yeah yeah. so to prepare an action it does cost you an action to do so even if the um, even if it's like a spell that's like a bonus action or so you still have to use your action to hold it since you're like waiting to prepare it um, okay so it consumes your action to hold a yes. action of any kind okay in that yeah, case because... I just have to pass my turn yeah, in the end, because it's like you're using a reaction to cast that spell later, but it also, if you are holding a spell, you still have to use the spell slot at that moment, whether or not it's mm. able to be successfully casted. But I can keep holding my hex as long as I don't d dispose of it. If I hold my hex, I can cast it as soon as I see somebody poke their head through the door? Yeah, so if you if you hold it, and then the trigger never happens. Yeah, then I have to lose then the I lose a slot. Yeah, but you would be able to use it at the time when the trigger occurs. Um, and it, it, you use your action to ready it, but it uses your reaction in when it happens. If it's a bonus right. action spell, does that take a full action or a, or still just the bonus action to hold it? If you are holding it, it would cost you an action, even if it's a yeah. bonus action. I have okay. it pulled up on Beyond. It says a, a ready action. So. Okay, yeah. since I already spent my standard action, I can't use it to hold my spell then, so it is definitely passing my turn. Cool. Yeah, unless uh, you want but... to poke your head out to try and see something. I'd have to flutter outside, and I don't know where the Dragonborn is, so I'm not risking it, because I would think that I would put myself into threat. Mm -hmm. That's fair. Sounds good. Well then, Vlad, it is your turn then. So, I'm kind of t torn between two positions. Either run out and chase down the other, chase down the Draconian to attack him. Well, actually, one of three options. Or. Vladimir draws his gun, aims at the door, holds action, and waits for him to come back around the corner because he knows that he's willing to bet that that guy's going to come back around going, Oi, what's going on over here? After seeing his comrade go fumbling down the stairs. 
or ready his blade for the same thing. Like he's like he'll stay in his current spot. But as soon as that draconian would come around the corner, he would jump in for attack. Yeah, I mean, Call if you, want, it, if you Ooh, want to go ahead idea. and hold your action and then wait for him to, to hop on in within five feet of you, you could use a hold action for that. Um, but well, yeah, it's could... either it's with either the revolver, which is going to make a lot of noise. Or with the blade, which there's already a lot of noise being made because of the guy falling down the stairs. Hmm. That's your call, then. Uh, I would say probably make it within the next couple of seconds, though. So, let's see. Okay, so he's not going to see anything immediately. So what Vladimir is going to do is he is going to drop from the bed facing the door and come on give me the button having the blade out ready to he's holding action ready to strike as soon as he comes around the corner okay i just want to make Basi sure basically basically my own version of a surprise motherfucker okay yep, and so you're ready that with your gun or with your sword or your machete? Uh, it's it's gonna be with the blade first okay Sounds good then. Well, if you're just holding it for that, then uh, that will go ahead and end your turn. Then, all right, I yep. just thought of a fun thing we could do on the next turn with the Ray of Frost. If you make him prone, he'll use half mm. his movement to get up, and then he can, if he has 30 feet, he can only move five feet with Ray of Frost on him. Okay, um, yep. quick question, Ace the door has it been completely knocked out of off of his hinges, or did he just simply completely bust the uh, the, the latching mechanism? So, pretty much, like, when he kicked down the door, you could see it busted off a hinge, on the top hinge, primarily. Um, so it's only attached see... by its bottom hinge? Yeah, and you can also see that from the imprint of the door being open, like, there is, like, a set of, like, dragonborn feet that have imprinted <laughs> through the wood. Ouch. Um, so it's, it's showing how strong this guy is. Um, but it is his turn, and he is going to, with his sluggishness... And as soon approach. as he steps in and gets within that range, I'm swinging my sword down. Go and ahead. I am also going to use one of my superiority tactics as a battle master. All right, well, let's see mm -hmm. if you... Wait, so which one are you using, though? Uh, disarming attack. Okay, so that's if you successfully hit, or is the die being used to add to your hit? Af after hitting a creature. So yes, it has to be on hit. Alright, so go ahead and attempt to attack this guy. Alright, and yay! 15 plus 6, that is 21. Yep, that hits. Nice. And I, in with the superiority die, I add a d8 to it. And as with rules as written, the opponent has to make a strength saving throw. If he fails, he drops his weapon. So oh, what's the DC? Uh, it never did give me a DC. Hang on, let me see. Uh, it should be a battlemaster thing. What are you trying to do? Maneuvers. Oh, there should have been a. Superior. Oh, here we go. Uh, eight plus two plus strength slash dex mod. So eight, ten. That would be. Uh, right? Yeah, eight, ten, fourteen, either way. Okay, well, he did succeed on that uh, with a fifteen on the die. Um, yeah. So his what he's not disarmed, but he takes the extra damage, though. Correct. Yes. Oh bullshit! Oh bullshit! Oh, well, that's mean. Oh my god. That's okay. six damage total. Oh wow, that fucking sucks. I'm sorry. That was a depravity. Good gosh. Mm. Dragonborn kicks our ass. <laughs> The 
fox <laughs> manages to just throw some brat, <laughs> like throw, throw a pebble. Okay, so well, that's horseshit, man. Yeah, six damage. God damn it. I mean, hey, you got damage on him, so that's really good. Um, but still, mm -hmm. yeah, that's not a lot. So as you uh, basically like swing in a direction to knock away the axe, you do see that like the force of this uh, draconian literally just like pauses it of just like it hits his like arm and the blade definitely does like hit but you see that he's pushing back against you it's just like oh you're a crafty one aren't you well let's see if you hit if you take this and he pulls away at your machete and attempts to cleave at you what's your AC uh I just lost it. Give me a second. Hang on. No worries. Uh, where did it go? Which armor? Oh, there it is. There it is. Found it. 16. Oh, this is the first attack. Cool. All right. Uh, second attack. Oh, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, as a response, as a reaction, as a reaction. Oh. I also have uh, repost, where when a mel when melee when mist and melee, I can use a reaction to make one melee attack versus the attacker. Ooh, all right. Go Let's go. Let's go. Okay, so where did that other D twenty go? You can always just conjure up a new one. Yeah, I'll just conjure up a new one. Kind and then of... you can delete that D20, and then all of them will delete it. Uh, <laughs> wow. Okay. That'll be a dirty 20. Uh, that is probably going to miss I mean, with a 13. Yeah, that does miss, sadly. Um. As he goes to swing on his first attack, uh, you are able to kind of move it in the way where the axe embeds into the door. And as you go for your machete attack, he actually moves it like you did similarly and embeds it into the uh, door. And as he chops his back out, he goes to swing the opposite direction again in order to hit you. Oh, he's got the same move? No, he's just moving in a similar way. Like, oh. like they're like they're both like combat proficient within like close hand combat. Um, oh dear I God! Did... This is like watching Salt Snake and Liquid Snake fighting each other. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> uh, so I did roll on the die prior. It was a fifteen on the dice. So uh, with his plus six, uh, he will hit. That you. does hit. Okay, and with his axe. Whoa. That's ten damage. Wow. Oof. Uh, as you do feel like as he pulls this axe back and swings uh, and it hits your side as he pulls out from it. It's like, I gotta be, I gotta be careful enough to make sure the pelt doesn't get uh, too abrupt as they say. As the ends of turn. You keep using that word. I do not think uh, it means what you think it means. <laughs> anyway, uh, the guy that uh, took a fall, uh, I get up. <laughs> I fall down, but I get up again. <laughs> I gotta make sure I mark his health properly. Uh, so it'll be about 15. Okay, so no, actually it is more. So he took 15. He was at... Okay, so now he's at 20. Cool. Oops, I should not have said that loud. <laughs> Wait, I legitimately did not catch what you said, so don't worry. Okay, so 5, 10, and he does make it up to here. So cool. Oh, nope, my bad. Nope, not Oops. there. Hell I'm I'll make it like right at the long. staircase, like right at the top. And... Mm -hmm. Oh, he's gonna fucking go for me. And that'll pretty much be it for him. Wait, can you turn my character to face the door, please? I forgot to do it on my turn. Paul, give me a sec. Um, see, so he took... Uh, okay, so he's at... 
I think that's it. Okay, cool. So turn your character to face the door. I can't grab them. Oh, there we go. There you go. Thank you. All right. Uh, next up, Nalor, you are up. And you are also up. All right. I get up. She does get up now that her, she actually has some HP. Her crafts are sealed this time, so now AC is 17. And I don't know how badly she's still hurt. But, but she's probably cast care runes on herself just so she has more HP. Is that okay? Yeah, go for it. Uh, is there a certain level you're casting it at? or? For right now, just the first level. Okay, go ahead and uh, roll a heal yourself then. Plus four from my wisdom modifier, and there's additional three because of the cycle of life. So it'll be like 10 HP restored. Okay, uh, go ahead and heal 10 HP. Is that also with your uh, life's disciple, or? Correct. Yeah. I was including life disciple with that. Got it. Okay. So you heal yourself back up with 10. So you should be at 19 then. All right, Correct. Just make sure that you track it on the, um, the Tailspire thing too. But All right. And is there anything else you plan on doing? I saw her looking really angry at the Dragon Board, and it can't exactly do much. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Uh, well then, uh, okay. it will be Vulcan's turn now. Alright. So then, uh, let's see here. I yeah, will say, though, that within your guys' position, you are pretty cramped in this room. So, Breaker, uh, just make sure that you are, like, right up against the desk as you're, as, uh, mm -hmm. you're fighting. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see here. Mm. I'll go ahead and move it to show yeah. where you're at All better. Right. If it would. There you go. Yeah. Okay, um, then, let's see, I will go ahead and cast, uh, uh, cast Eldritch Blast on uh, the big idiot right here in front of us. The Draconian, or? Yep. There, uh... the, the major annoyance in here. So, the thing is, is that he is... Like, there is Vlad right in front of him, so there right. is a bit of, like, cover. I can say go for it, since it would be half cover, but you will uh, have... I use him basically as a brace there, just like someone might brace for a gun uh, on their shoulder there. I cast an Eldritch Blast over his shoulder uh, as if he was just a wall that I'm firing over. Okay, well, if that's the case, then I still will say that the cover goes both ways. Um, so I would say at least you can roll it, but it's going to be a bit higher, you know, mm -hmm. like a partial cover. Okay. So go ahead and attempt to hit the... Plus seven there, 19. Okay, you hit the Draconian. Uh, and right. then go ahead and roll damage. And damage here, plus five to whatever that ends up being, ten. Okay. And yep, yep. push. All right, then. So he'll get pushed back ten feet onto the stairwell. And then um, what is the... Um... Oh, hold on a second. Yeah, uh, um... dam damage is ten. Well, I mean, like, what's your spell save, DC? Uh, oh, spell save, uh, DC. Oh, no, no. Uh, what? 
there there is no spell so save. I I'm using that based on like whether or not he is able to stay stabilized, like on like okay, like he's able to stand up because he's on the staircase. Oh, I see. Yeah, there. Oh, would that just uh, be a reflex save on his part, not the spell save? No, no, no. Eh. I'm just I'm using that as a difficulty for whether or not he falls down the stairs or he catches himself. Oh, okay. Uh, fifteen. Okay, so he got fifteen on the die, so he beats it. So he's pushed back a little bit. He hits against the wall, but he's able to catch himself a little bit. Hmm. All right, and with the action and uh completed uh, there i don't have any uh, real bonus actions uh, to uh take there i uh, don't have any don't really have anything uh, for uh healing so i guess i will go ahead and end my turn okay sounds good uh marshall you are up okay so i believe the ten the Coal, the ray of frost did end on the dragon. Yeah, it did. Oh, I was just updating that. Quick question: uh, If he was frozen and chilly, would that have uh, affected his ability to save himself at all? Ooh, no. It only okay. affects um, movements, uh, aka how much he can move on his turn. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Plus, it, yeah. Plus, it already basically would have ended by his turn anyway. So it's like. I forgot which one has got which one got more damage the 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 dragon or the half orc human what is it it's just is a, it a human? human ruffian yeah, yeah. Te buff. technically which one's not... technically by how the rolls were the other dude not the draconian the other dude took more damage mm -hmm. okay I will cast witch bolt on the human my Ooh. first level Okay, go ahead and roll. Does a... 25 nice. That's pretty close, but it will hit. <laughs> it's got two spells. Uh, okay, go ahead and roll damage. Okay, he takes a d12 of lightning damage. Yep. Not bad, not bad. Mm-hmm. Lightning? I thought uh, Witch Bolt was uh, necro uh, ne uh, necromantic. Nope. It is nope. a pure literal bolt of lightning. Yep. Um, oh. And you do have concentration on this, so I'm going to mark your base with a blue, um, okay. signifying that you are focusing on Witch Bolt. And then... Hmm, I don't think it's worth it to try to do anything else i don't have enough stuff to do bonus action stuff the only bonus action spell i have is misty step and i shouldn't use it yet and it not what? not to mention like you can't even use it yeah you wouldn't even be able to use it anyway because you already cast a level spell um but i mean if you have movement still if you want Okay, well, if there isn't anything else, then um, I'll go ahead and just pass the turn then. So, mm -hmm. uh, Parth, you're up. Do I have line of sight of the human, and do I have line of sight of the dragonborn? The dragonborn is a more, even more questionable one. So, you are in the far corner of the room. So, let's go ahead and see if you can draw a line. Yeah, like if I try to draw a straight line, that is just like if I, I if i'm looking at the guy's shoulder if i look at the center of his body it's eh. dragonborn seems like it's uh, out of the question right yeah so dragonborn is in full cover so you would not be able to target him though i would say that the other guy the human he does in fact have half cover on him okay so i'll have to reposition then uh marshall might get a little bit of a surprise for the flurry of wings uh, has the pseudo dragon fly over his head, and off I go to the uh, other to the shadow realm again. 
dang it, I held oh, myself no. down low too. Yeah. One sec. Yeah, maybe putting yourself uh, about here, it won't heat you up. It's just being very picky. Yeah. Yeah, it's just. There we go. Polish. Am I yeah, in the room this time? Uh, I think I'm in the room second. this time. Um, hold on, hold on. I for some reason you guys can't be heard. Oh, we can't be heard. Oh, here. There, mm -hmm. I, I fixed my character. Oh no, nothing can be heard. Hold on, everything's linked up. Hold on, give me a second, guys. Oh Jesus. Is uh, your OBS not picking okay. up anything in on your mixer? Uh, sorry, guys. Um, so I can hear you, Kate. Ace, but that's all. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, for some reason it, it just stopped linking up. Hold on, give me one second as I go ahead and just refix everything. Okay. Something, all right. Uh, what ha I just got back. Uh, somehow the stream was not able to hear us. Okay. So Ace so is fixing. Game audio is good. Let me try the Discord. Give me just one moment, yeah, guys, I, as I my fix this. PC just straight up crashed. Mm. All right, I will be right back then real quick. I got to use the restroom. Okay. No worries. Um, I'm getting this audio right. fixed up here. My games. Our team mod man. Okay, someone try to say something, someone? Merp, Testing merp. one, two, three, four, five. We're good. All right. I just had to reconfigure it. I think the crash might have, might have uh, affected mm -hmm. that somehow. Mm -hmm. Oh, my computer crash? Yeah, because um, yeah. I it just stopped connecting to it for some reason, but I got it fixed. I have okay. no idea why it crashed. I'm kind of uh, scared now. Unfortunately, there's all sorts of possibilities there, but it's a three d three D game. It could be all sorts of reasons. It said um that watchdog clock timeout or whatever. Uh, that is caused by when one of your drivers takes too long to respond, or it loaded something incorrectly. Oh, fun. That usually has to do with your graphics card. Uh, I would suggest uninstalling your graphics drivers entirely and then reinstalling them entirely again. Well, luckily, I have to install a new one anyways, so... Yeah. When it, when it goes to install, make sure you check the box, perform a clean install. Do yep. not do also, the uh, express. Yeah. Also, how do I uninstall my current... Like, physically, I know how to take it out, but, like, is there anything it, I have to do when I it, take Nvidia? it out? Yeah, it's NVIDIA. NVIDIA is really easy. Literally, just run the installer in the non-express mode, and there's literally a checkbox that says perform clean install. It forces it to perform a full uninstall first, then install. Oh, no, mm. I mean, if I'm the new one, I think it, it's GeForce, so I think it's also NVIDIA. Yes, I'm, try, I'm saying, when you go to install the new driver, there's literally an option to do it automatically for you. Just check the box, perform clean install. Oh, sweet. I mean, yep. It takes a lot longer, but when you choose that option, it tells NVIDIA to do a full uninstall of your graphics drivers, tell Windows to fail over to back to the emergency GPT driver, or a AGP driver, then it installs the NVIDIA drivers as if it's the first time again. Yeah. So do oh, you have to install that work. now, is the question? Uh, only if he keeps crashing out. <laughs> Continuously. Okay. There we mm -hmm. go, I'm back on Fandolin. Alright, there you are. All right, let me go ahead and give you permission. So, any uh, case... Let me just turn my graphics settings, like, all the way down. Uh, for my turn, I now have proper line of sight of the Dragonborn, correct? Uh, you have some sight. I would still say it, it does go within, like, half cover, so... Really? I need to move more? Uh, let's start the line. Uh, one sec. So, you're right here, and he's right here. Yeah. So there is that bit of the door that hits in, so that's why I'm saying it's like technically a half cover. All right, I'll move all the way over to uh, Vulcan then, and try Beautiful. not to. Uh, I don't know why I keep automatically gaining height. I just want to move horizontally, and it keeps changing my height too. It's because there's other models in the way, so technically it's like, oh, it's a lot. It's a lot, basically forcing you to go up, you know. Mm. Oh, there we go. So. Now there's no doubt I can see him because he's straight line. Um, there's really no doubt. Yep. So, uh, important question because I keep looking at this and I'm very confused by it. Uh, Hex, it's it uses the statement, 
target has disadvantages on ability checks made with the chosen ability. What are ability checks? Are those saving throws, or is that does that go beyond saving throws? So it is specifically saving throws, um, and this is and there's been some debate upon this um, of whether or not it's like all checks are ability checks, um, but according to rules as written and how things like the intention of it is, it's a bil- it's uh, ability saving throws. So, so such death as, would like, be reflex hmm. check, strength would be athletics, things like that. No, so like for instance, like say for instance you get fireballed, and I'm like, I need you to make a dexterity saving throw. If you were hexed, and upon dexterity, you have disadvantage. So what do the other stats do? What what would I be hurting him by if I hexed him for strength? Uh, if you had to make a strength saving throw, like if you were grappled or something like that. Yeah. Ah, okay, I follow. In that case, yeah. I am hexing the dragonborn, and my chosen type is dexterity. Okay, so another one on the hex. Another one bites the hex. And with uh, my remaining turn, I perform an Eldritch Blast on him. So I'll roll to see if I hit. Because my last turn didn't involve me doing any kind of saving throw, attack roll, or ability check, uh, that the advantage from a silvery barbs for two turns ago still is in queue so i get uh, my advantage still yes you do if you if you chose specifically yourself so yeah he did so okay. a 12 plus what's my spell hit oh yeah i put that in my uh, cheat sheet so i don't have to re- keep looking it up spell attack is proficiency plus charisma so that would add a five so 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 to hit. Uh, that will hit. Uh, go ahead and roll for damage. Okay. So D8 plus, uh, no, sorry, D6 plus a D10. Yeah, I thought I had it written down in here. Uh, one D10 plus four, so there it is. Also, thank you for checking that dark fire. I really appreciate it. And I hope that all oh, you guys are having yourself a good time. Was there an exclamation point in, uh, on the road? That was pitiful. <laughs> I only do the three damage. I don't think I get any other bonuses because I don't have the invocation. Well, since he has hex on him, you also deal an additional D6 of necrotic damage. Yes, thank you for that. I forgot about that. Yeah, and one more damage. Oh, no. Mm. Okay, well, so that was four in total? Yeah, four damage in total. I get no other additional bonuses. Uh, all I can do is, is I use the remainder of my turn to continue fluttering in this direction, so I am now over here, because I can't hover. Good, I have to keep moving if I'm airborne. Sounds good, then. Uh, well, yeah, that is the turn, then. And Vlad, it is your turn. Okay, let me clean up my dice a little bit here, maybe. Here, let me help clear all the dice out. Tails probably not having a fun time on my end. So, at this point, Vladimir's just had enough of this after getting hit. He goes, what? Fuck this pulls out his revolver and takes aim at the uh the dragonborn at the, uh, the stairs <laughs> at the dragonborn okay uh go ahead and roll to hit all right sent a message in my little chat oh nice, fuck dude. you really oh okay with the pulling out of the revolver and firing upon it. Um, you seem to have uh, misjudged your mark a little bit as not only did the loud noise of your revolver ricochet across this whole building, but it also shatters through the glass right behind the um, the draconian. As, uh. they're, as they're a little bit shaken by this, it's just like a firearm? 
Really? <laughs> yes, really. Action surge. All right, go for it. 19. Oh, that hits. All right, roll your damage. And... That'll be these two. That'll be eight plus four. That's 12. Oh, man. So against the Draconian, 12 damage. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Finally, one of us hits him for more than six damage. <laughs> right? Finally. So you see this bullet. You take, you take a second shot quickly, and you fire it, and it pierces through um, this Draconian's armor along with his scales. And you see that there's, like, basically a semi bit of, like, explosive, like, uh occursion like a part that like occurs on his back almost as if like the bullet like stops and breaks apart um as it goes out and he does not look too good um and he but he is furious that you use that against him and, and at uh, that and upon seeing his reaction of like he's furious Know who you're picking your fights with. All right, then. Is that your turn? Yep, that will be my turn. All right. So, with that being the case, it is this Draconian's uh, turn. And. Oh, approaches. Uh, and gets in your face one more time to uh, attempt to strike at you. Uh, nope, it fails the first attack. I'm going to use Repost. Ooh, expend another die. That's three dice. Yeah, I'm expending crap. another die. Yes, th this, this motherfucker's going down. I have a personal vendetta against him. Haha. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Uh, actually, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a quick roll uh, of a D4. Ace, high or low? This will determine which weapon I'm using. Uh, well, because yeah, I have the high. sword. At, I have the sword in one hand and the revolver in the other. Sure, I'll play around. Let's do high. Okay, well, looks like firearm it is at point blank range. Mm. Well, so the thing is, though, is that if you're responding back, you have to use a melee weapon. So you. Oh so no, you... that's right. That's right. So yep. okay, yep. melee attack. Yeah, that's right. I forgot. Oh, a son of a no. bitch! Oh, <laughs> come on! Jeez! All right. Why? Game. Do you have inspiration? God damn it. We're, no, he we're, have we're dancing around at this point in the door. <laughs> yeah, so... I, I think the door is taking the most punishment out of everybody so far. Yeah, mm -hmm. at this point, you see that, like, upon your, like, pairing of attacks going back and forth, um, this door is completely busted. And you even see, like, the bits around the wall, like, basically being destroyed as well. As, like, there's one impact from the next of just heavy weapons. Um, leading into his bonus action, where you see him, like, frothing with rage. And with, like, this grim smile as he attempts to attack you again. Hmm. Jeez, these fighters have a lot of attacks. Uh, okay, so 7 plus 6, so 13 misses, I assume? Yep. Okay, and with his multi-attack, he gets one more. <laughs> oh, no, it, it only uses reaction, so he already used it up. Hmm. No, it's just the parrying, I'm saying. Oh, yeah, the parrying. Okay, that's a 17. Yeah, that hits. No, it okay. doesn't. <laughs> oh, Silvery barbs. Oh. All right. Who are you giving advantage to? I'm giving advantage to Vlad. 
All Last right. Your next, your next attack will have advantage. Hint, could I get a clarification? For what? Uh, okay. Was that his second attack that he just rolled for? So, he, so he, so he has multi attack. Okay. Um, and he used one action for multi attack, and he had an action surge as a as a ah. legendary reaction. A legendary action to do another attack with multi attack. Wow, he has legendary reactions. Jeez. He only has one, so. But, still. but luckily enough, you get you forced him to get a two on that attack. So, with with your bits and putter of sparkles and such, uh, you literally just poof it right in his face. And again, the door takes the travesty of all of this damage. <laughs> <laughs> The I door is the gonna. Door and I won. <laughs> the the door the door is turning into firewood at this point, <laughs> pretty much. It's um, gonna be sawdust at this rate. Yeah. Next up is this boy right here, who literally is just going to um, be right. Uh, he's gonna move around and he's just gonna prepare for uh, for something. Would it be possible for one of you to screen share Tailspire for me, please? I. Do not trust Tailspire right now. My PC's hot. I will uh, render it. Thank you. Yeah, I I would do it, but I'm already running a lot here. So if someone else could do it, that'd be fantastic. I got it. Cause uh, you're streaming. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Uh, next up, we got a boy. Oh, did you oh, kill no, the? Did you kill so the human? Five, ten, fifteen. No, the human 20. moved. Okay, so from here, um, Vlad, you do see that a hooded figure does start to run up the stairs quickly, and you see him kind of, like, um, kind of stop right up there. Um, and then next up, there can be, uh, oh, nope, I, let me do that, so bam, stop doing this. I want I want him to move. He's up in the rafters. He's up in the rafters? Yep. Son of a... Oh, damn it. He had a full cover from me. Damn it. Don't push him down the stairs, please. You're cutting off my concentration from Witch Bolt. Yeah, that's the problem with Witch Bolt, is, is you never want to cast it on a foe that can break your line of sight. Why are you in the rafters, my dude? Get the frick out. God damn it. Y'all are pushing him down the stairs. I'm breaking... You're, I'm wasting spell slots. Uh, the guy that you're trying to target isn't actually down the stairs. He's literally on the opposite side of the wall from you. Oh, well, he doesn't have... Does he have, oh, that's technically full cover, too. Okay. Yeah, you would have to move under your go. turn to regain line of sight. Otherwise, uh, Witch Bolt mm -hmm. cancels. Fuck. Okay. Uh, next up, Norlor, you're up. Uh, double check the rules for Witch Bolt. I don't know if it's on your turn if it cuts off or if it's on the enemy's turn. It it's at all. Here, I'll double check. Um, the spell also oh. ends if the target is ever outside the spell's range or if it has total cover from you. Oh, so it's cut off then already. Mm -hmm. I hate Witch Bolt for that one reason. I stopped using it because my enemies yep. just kept moving away from me and it's over. It's my strongest. Well, luckily enough, these guys don't want to. Uh, being that case, uh, no lore. It is your turn. Okay, I have line of sight for the uh, dragon ball guy, right? Uh, that is correct. You do. Seeing so that he has a a hex on his dex, I'll try sacred flame aim on him. All right. Uh, he has to make a dexterity saving throw against what's the DC? With disadvantage. Fourteen, and that is with the, the BF. Oh, is that is right? It is with disadvantage. So. Yep, because of my hex. Okay, so it was fifteen on the die plus it was a dexterity saving throw. Yeah, so that's eighteen. So that does succeed. We should keep getting all these high rolls. Jeez. Yeah, sadly. Hmm. Quick, steal the GM's dice. <laughs> I'm using the same dice as you are in the same program. Well, that's annoying. 
And as a bonus action, I cast Hailing Rod on Vlad, because he is a bit hot. All right. Uh, what level are you casting at? Level one for right now. Okay. Uh, yep, go ahead and Give roll me the d4. Ten. Give me ten. Flying Rod is a d4. I yes. know. I know, I was being facetious. <laughs> ten. Ten. <laughs> Three plus. Three. Three plus my spell model fire, which is four. And again, I have the cycle alive, which make it a plus three right now. So, ten. so that's ten. <laughs> <laughs> that's ten. You gave me ten. Correct. Ten. Oh, yeah. I'm guessing that was full HP. <laughs> that now I'm back up to full HP. Hey, there we go. <laughs> Look at Nor being very magically efficient. <laughs> Hell yeah. Alright, and then I assume that since that was your action bonus action, there's nothing else you're doing? Yeah, I've used up all what I can do. Okay, we're gonna speed this up a little bit, guys. Uh, so, uh, Vulcan, your turn. Don't Breaker? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't know why, but dude, whenever you said uh, Vulcan there, it would, the, the name, I heard it, but I was like, that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> that's my character, it's just not me. I have no idea as to why. Uh, there. Okay, so seeing as how uh, we have a bunch more guys uh, coming up here, um, I am going to... Uh, use burning hands uh, from over uh, uh, Vladimir's uh, shoulder on everyone in front. Wait, you want to use that inside a wooden building? Go for it. Yes. <laughs> there. Wait, so it's a 15 foot cone? Mm hmm. Okay, so this one, I would probably roll because the cone it is gonna hit. Um, Vlad, because it's a cone, it's an area effect. It wouldn't really be something you'd be able to like, be really reaching over him and just be like, "Hold on, excuse me," because that would that would that would say that you were within his five feet range. Um, though, if you wanted to, you could like hop on the bed next to you, and then I would say that would be okay. Not okay. that one. I'll just say the other one. This Don't one forget here. that door's not there anymore. At least it's not yeah, the truth anymore. Yeah, the door's yeah. not here. Let me get rid of the door. The door's yeah. the door's dead. Nope. Stop it. Hey, <laughs> cut. Now, now, it's Vulcan's, now it's Vulcan's turn to reach for the heavens. Right. Reach for this. Here, I'll get you back. Give me one moment. Thank you. Yeah, I tried to move it manually. They're not using any of the arrow keys or anything like that to what place on the bed. And zoom. What was the special button to teleport your character? So it's if you click on your character oh. and you hold shift, click on your character, and then it'll go elsewhere. Did you just move your character even though I put you in the right fucking position? And uh, there, yes, I did. <laughs> Bro, it's <laughs> ungrateful. Uh, you know? I was going to make him turn there, but uh, I, I think... clicked on it and then uh, released and zip. I think he's in the rafters. Oh, you're in I the rafters. Him. I move your cut box just above the rafter. There you go. There, right there. There you go. Don't yeah. touch yourself. <laughs> no touching yes. yourself. <laughs> if you, yeah, don't touch yourself. That's how the dinos died. Uh, <laughs> all right. There. So there, fifteen feet here. Yeah. All right. That's perfect. Perfect, right there. Yep. Mm -hmm. I usually do ninety degrees, but yeah. Yeah, well, I mean... Well, actually, it would be 15, so that'd be... Yeah, that, that's fine, whatever. So it'll it'll hit four targets. Mm. So they have to make dexterity saving throws. And yeah, they're... Uh, let's see. Confirming. Uh, they're burning hands, 15-foot cone. Yep, dexterity saving throws. And remember that two of them have uh, 
hexes against dexterity, both the dragon and that first uh, guy. Okay, so the stronger ones have disadvantage, so I'll mm -hmm. go ahead and roll those ones first. Um, give me okay. just one moment. I just gotta confirm one thing for the other two. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so they have, so, all right, cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll the stronger guys first. Mm -hmm. I'll do one for advantage, or no, disadvantage, and I'll do another one for disadvantage, and then I'll roll the other two. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. All right. Ooh. Okay, Ooh. so the Dragonborn fails. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so that's a 12 plus this 15 mm -hmm. for the for the other guy that was oh no, that was hexed so that beats it you said there it um, beats it beats it and there no uh, spell save DC is 12 your spell save DC oh. is 12 or oh, sorry 15 my spell save 15 yeah yep so 15 so meets it beats it wait 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 and then these next two, I'll still roll the same two dice, but these will be for the uh, other ruffians. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so both of them fail. And one of them fails. No, no. they. So the Dragonborn fails. Uh -huh. the, the, guy, the other guy that's hexed, he succeeds. Why? Because he got a fit. Because he got 12 on his die, but he has plus three for dex. Oh. And then there was a 13 and a 19. So that's 16 and a 22. So both of those guys succeed. There. Okay. Bang. Yeah. So now you can go ahead. Oh, I didn't mean to roll that. Um, so you can go on ahead and roll for your burning hands damage. Okay. And burning hands damage is uh, three. Uh, let's see. 3d6 that's 4d6 because second level oh yeah that's right you upcast mm -hmm. them yep yep Ooh. all right let's One, see who's two, three, four. all right yeah four yep 4d6 and there you we might go. get this actually within one go holy shit all right so there's that as the raw damage and i will roll up the hexes here in a moment oh uh, wait uh, Well, so it's only one hex, I think. Let me let me double check though. Four. So hex. Only his five, hex counts, so that only only the person who yeah, bestowed four. the hex can benefit from it. Yeah, yeah aka the, the dragonborn. Yeah. Oh, okay. So. Yeah. No, wait. Hang on. Vulcan performed hex on the first dude. On the human. I performed the hex right. on the dragonborn. So unfortunately, My... the hex only applies to the human. My apologies. Okay, so uh, until the spell ends, you deal extra damage whenever you hit with an attack. Mm -hmm. Just in. with an attack, Ow. though. Whatever yep. you hit with an attack. Yep. You know what? I'll allow it. I'll allow. Yeah. So you can go ahead and roll the extra um the d1. Stop moving your character, bro. Wait, so if <laughs> I there. hex somebody, I hit the wrong button. All right. <laughs> so if I hex somebody, any of my friendlies deals an extra one d6. It's just specifically you, but the question is of what the term of attack is. So if it's like a spell attack, or if it's like um, with, a, for example, like a spell that deals damage, I'll allow the fact that since Hex isn't a crazy good spell, I will allow the ruling that um, if, you, if your spell deals damage, I'll consider that as an attack, preferably for Hex's ruling. So, so. If it, so if I hex the dragonborn, anybody who does a attack that hits, do you? No, it's just you. It's it's just the person who hexes. Oh, okay. So he isn't getting a hex on the dragonborn because I hex the dragonborn. Yeah, but you are getting the hex damage off on the other guy that is hexed. So. Mm -hmm. So that is one uh, d six. Yeah, so just go ahead and roll an extra d6 for the one guy. Okay, one damage. <laughs> so he still takes nine damage because he succeeded and it's rounded down. So, but I don't think actually... Okay, Roof, can you stop? Okay, he, he's still up, but he crispy though. Uh, Hang on. He would take nine damage from the uh, burning hand right. plus You're one right. from the hex. My apologies. Total. You are right. 
Uh, and then the other guys take nine, which I think. Uh, oh my god! If these kill these guys, I'm gonna be fucking pissed. Nope, they do not. <laughs> okay, so they have they have that much health instead, actually. So. And they took nine, so they're at so be so, so be okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, they're that much. Okay. Right. Uh, so, where did the to... yeah? Where did the six and nineteen come from again? That was a miss roll. Ah, it was a okay. it was a miss roll. Yep, that was my apology. And then um, from the uh. From your, uh, K, like uh, from the, your hands, immediately within this dragonborn's face, even though he takes half damage because of fire resistance, you still scorch this guy's face to a point of unrecognizable conditions. There. There. Oh. There. As he is there. dead. Ah, well, that's what you hear get for a barging into other people's rooms. <laughs> this is not the room service I was looking for. Yeah. Yeah. Who else wants some? And I yell out to the rest of the, those trying to attack us. All right. Is there anything else you want to do? Uh, there. Uh, nope. That'll be all uh, here as a... Uh, that was action and not really anything for bonus actions. Okay. Uh, Marshall, you're up. Okay. Hmm. Well, my plan was to go for the, the Dragonborn, but they're dead now. Oh, because you had the Witch Bowl on him. Oh. No, because the, it was on the human. Oh, it wasn't the human. I was yeah, right. Yeah, but because, but because it got cut off. I was going to switch to the Dragonborn. Hmm. I think it's still Witch Bolt somebody. Mm hmm? It's still your turn. You can still uh, move your line of sight. Yeah, that's true. But Witch Bolt, I have to cast it again, too, to do it. Because, I mean, I'm, not like... in, because I'm not in Tailspire, because my computer was going to overheat, I can't, like, physically... I can't physically do anything to the board. Well, I like I said, I can move your character around and roll the dice for you. Like, I don't have much stuff to do either way. That's the problem. You can so you can move onto the bed and witch bolt, because you would have line of sight, like at, at least line of sight enough to use the ability, because you still have concentration on the spell. You can also push yep. past. Uh... Vlad, do a ray of frost and then step back again. So no, the, the spell ends if I lose, if they have full cover. Oh, that's right. Okay, yep. And they do, since they have full cover, then the spell ends. Mm hmm. Wait, I forgot about it, that part. Is it an instantaneous loss no matter what? Instantaneous. And you can't uh, move it back? Yeah, it, which bolt is brutal that way. Uh, again, you can <laughs> still step forward, ray of frost, and step back again. Mm hmm. Yeah, I think I'll... Yeah, but Witch Bolt does so much damage compared to that. Mm -hmm. Well, let's go ahead and make our turn quickly. Okay, so Remember, the one that just I, came I up... Did... My grand total is three damage. You can do better than me. Okay, the ra that... I'm assuming that's the ranger that just came up, if I'm reading the initiative tracker right. The one in the yeah, green. Yeah, so there was a, a ranger that just popped on up, aka the guy with two daggers, and then another brute came up. I'm gonna upcast Witch Bolt at second level. Targeting the Ranger? Yeah. Alright, uh, let's go ahead and see if it hits. What's your uh, attack bonus? Plus seven. Plus seven? Okay, let's see. So it's a 16 to hit, which does hit. Okay, and it takes 2d12 this time. At, at first. Then every single one after is 1d12. Okay, that's 11 damage, and upon shocking him with your um, Witch Bolt, uh, this dude gets fried. Let's go! As he dies. 
And upon, like, him just basically being shocked and everything, he does, like, tumble down the stairs and everything. Um, Any roll for luck to see if it takes the human down with him? Wait, roll what? Because he tumbled down the stairs. Is that human? Is that other human on the stairs in the stairwell? No, he just, since he tumbled, it's not like he's any, like, if he's heavier, that'd be one thing, but he's lighter. So he would just tumble past him. Okay. Damn. Worth All a right. shot to ask. All right. Anything else you want to do? Uh, I will turn a first level spell slot into two sorcery points as a bonus action. Right. Sounds good. And that's it. All right, Parth. Oh, that was a good turn. <coughs> Pardon me. Parth does another swing. I need to be in this position for full bishop visibility of the guy on the stairs, right? Uh, I'm or so sorry. I was, I was distracted by something. What was the question? Does uh, do I have full visibility on that dude? If I draw a straight line, I do. Uh, the guy on the stairs. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You definitely do. Okay, I move my hex onto him. Same thing. He's uh, got a dexterity uh, hit, so he's got That's disadvantage right. on dexterity. Okay. okay. And I just try another eldritch blast. Go for it. No, it doesn't hit. I don't even need to guess. And yep, sadly, does not hit. And I continue my uh, flight in a little circle again, so I'm way over here again. Actually, I'll All right. right here. Uh, next up, it is Vlad. Uh, let's see. Switch the cutoff. Momentary AFK. No worries. Yeah. I work may be activating me again here shortly. So... Vladimir steps into the door frame and I assume that this facing this other dude right here, the first one up on the landing, I assume that's within five feet. Uh you're around the corner, but yeah, you're you are within five feet, so you can attack mm -hmm. him. So I'm gonna swing down at him with my blade. Alright, go ahead and attack. Dude, what the fuck? Why am I getting these low fucking rolls? Sometimes it happens. What's the total? Uh, it probably ain't gonna hit, but it's a 14. Oh, it just almost hits. Um, so you do unfortunately miss with your swing. But I am using the door frame as half cover, though, because of it. Because of my position. Yes, and that's why also he would also get that same thing, too. Yeah. Um, though, upon the attack, that dude does get uses held action and is able to do an attack back. Uh, I removed all the dice. Yeah. Lady Luck has no... B -b -b -b. <laughs> I'm tired. Uh, that also misses too, so... <laughs> Luckily. Uh, could I... Actually, you know what? I am using a lot of these, but I don't give a fuck because it recharges after a short rest. Uh, Repost. Again. Okay, that was your fourth one you've used? Yep, that's my fourth one. I've got one more after this. Go for it. See if you can uh, hit him. Is it, is it this one? No, it's not that one. Oh, I already, I already cleared my own die. Yeet. Get another one. Uh, that will be 16. Oh, actually, no, yeah, it just hits. It just hits. You're good. Oh, meets it, beats it. Thank you. And it's only, it's only a partial cover, so you, yeah. I, I'm, I'm doing it as a bonus, but you still get it. Wait, I just. Go ahead. For one, I nicked him. Well, ah. well for five. For five total, but I still nicked him. You also use your superiority dice, don't you? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Did I, did I Oko Did he... that ranger? 
Mm -hmm. Oh, come on. So okay. five, seven total. Mm -hmm. Seven total? Yep, that's seven total. You got him. Nice. Oh, hell yeah. He had three health left. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lucky shot, mate. Das for Danya. And then, Marshall, did you have a question? Did I, ha like, one shot that ranger? Well, so he got hit by the burning hands, and oh, then yeah, the residual damage was just like you just killed them. Oh, oh yeah. But I mean, that was all right. Uh, next up, so dragon is dead. He's dead. He's dead. And so this guy is not dead. So he's gonna go. We'll oh, tell you what. You can't hit on anybody. And then he's gonna go ahead and attempt to hit you. With another morning star. Does a 17 hit. Yes, by one. Damn, okay. Well, it's going to be a D8 of bludgeoning damage plus whatever strength he's got. That's seven bludgeoning against you. Oof. Oh, I can't adjust my health. I'll just have to remember that for my next turn. Seven damage. Sounds good. Okay, and uh, back of the order. There. All right. I'm back. Did I miss anything in, in particular here? Mm-hmm. Uh, Vladimir downed the other big dude, only to get clobbered. Uh, only to get clobbered with seven damage by uh the other by the other Morning Star wielder. I think this is just seven damage because I yeah I had to step away for dinner, uh like at least to grab it, and I'm, I'm I have silvery barb, so I'm trying to make sure I don't miss any turns here. <laughs> No worries. Yeah, we're trying to rush this down and get it finished up a little bit since it's been... It's, this isn't even just, like, the beginning of this combat. <laughs> uh, okay. Upon our new resistance, he tries to sacred flame the uh, guy that's in front of Vlad. Go for it. Uh, he has disadvantage because of his one thing. Yeah, Fucking but that's exactly it. All right, so disadvantage. Yep, you got him. All right, go ahead and roll your nice. D eight of radiance. Cat fucking warlocks, am I right? Like. <laughs> <laughs> also, don't forget, uh, team. Even if you have to keep throwing out what you're going to do when the situation changes, it doesn't hurt to plan your turn ahead of time. Yeah, let's, let's definitely make sure we're trying to plan ahead. Um. Okay, so you get two Radiance damage on him uh, as his face score a little bit from the Radiance and he's like, oh, fucking hell. <laughs> is that, uh, are you done? For now. All right, sounds good. Uh, Vulcan, it is your turn. Breaker. Breaker? Oh, did he get summoned again? God damn it. Oh, he had to step out for a sec, so oh. Hex moves and blast. Um, okay, so he, you, he'll have enough range for it, so I won't even have the difficulty of it. So uh, if someone wants to go ahead and roll for his Eldritch Blast. I'll roll it since I'm the fellow Warlock. Go for it. I think he gets plus seven. It, yeah, it probably should, might be. That hits. Uh, and then go ahead and roll a d10 and a d6 for me. Okay, you got him. So within a matter of moments, uh, you see that this brute gets basically forced and pushed against this wall, um, only to be hit with so much force that not only does it 
knock down this person, but you see that the face kind of caves in a little bit upon impact of hitting the wall. Oh yeah, blunt force uh, trauma. <laughs> yep, by blunt force trauma and also by Eldric, uh, adept. So. <laughs> yeah, cause, so because he caused uh, force damage, necromancy damage, and blunt force damage. <laughs> Pretty much, uh, does cause this enemy to fall. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and clear the list. So. We're out of initiative. No, so at this moment, you are out of initiative uh, as the tides do seem to, um, everything seems to calm down for a little bit um, until you hear uh, a door bust down um, from downstairs and the immediate words that are said, we're taking this. Uh, to the grave, whether or not we die or they die. As we'll go ahead and call the session right there. Whoa. Aww. So yeah, that was it. Um, no level up for you guys. You have oh, way no. too many. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we will go... <laughs> Oh no, level four. We could have gotten ASI. Mm-hmm. Which is really but... important for me. <laughs> Very much so. But I guess I can yeah, swap we'll... my ASI for our feet, but even still. <laughs> we'll go ahead and just call it off for right here though, guys, because it's getting pretty late in addition to um it's been going for a pretty good uh, session actually. And mm -hmm. I think what better way to end off the session than to go ahead and raid on off to somebody? Uh, so let's see. Who can we raid off to? I will also check my followers list to see if there's uh, someone there too. Let's see. Let's see who's uh, online right now. Uh, let's see. We got Varric the Doomarine playing Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Weezilla is. Uh, we've got. Uh, Nero Husky doing the same thing. Oh, they must be co oping together. Okay. Yeah. I, I do know one person who I haven't raid off to in a bit. His name is Mazlax. Uh, he's a bit of a smaller streamer. And he's playing some Sonic and Sega All Stars uh, Racing, uh, which is a game that I love uh, dearly. Not as good as Mario Kart, but still really fun. And I think yeah, I might, we might go ahead and raid on off to him. Yeah, Sega Sonic, Sega and Sonic Racing All Stars is actually a really decent oh. racing game. Take care, everybody. Yeah. yeah. So we'll go ahead and raid on off to Mazlux. Let me go ahead and get that set up here for a sec. Uh, I remember how to spell his name: M A Z Z L A X. Okay. But yeah, everyone, thank you all so much for hopping on in today for this stream. This was a really fun stream, and apologies for the technical issues. Um, luckily, we got it fixed and. Uh, hopefully it was an enjoyable time. And if you are a subscriber, then why not consider using some of our raid emotes, uh, a.k.a. the one raid emotes. Uh, look at <laughs> the fen. The fen's got a little flag that's adorable. Um, no arrows. That's not That's not mine. <laughs> Get that shit out of there. Wait, wait, wait. What'd you post? What'd you post? I need to look at the stream. But anyway, uh, you go ahead and use our raid emotes our raid <laughs> emotes um and with our message club fenguin screes again what about this what about this raid emote no not that one even that's a good one too uh but we'll go ahead and rain on off to Mazlax. Uh, make sure you go ahead and stay around for like the 15 minutes or so just to give them some extra love uh and i hope to see you guys on wednesday for a uh, fun little stream, evening stream. But with that being said, thank you guys for hopping on in, and I hope you have yourself a wonderful night. Bye-bye. Have a good Bye -bye. time. Bye.